And we're live. And so far we have Jerry1911 here. And let's see who's in the side. Uh, Chessboard was here earlier. Vanessa Kitty, Tactical Fud, Andy, um, Gunswater, MacMan is here, Crazy Scotsman, Andre D'Angelo is here. Okay. How is everyone doing tonight? We got uh, Jerry1911 on here who's going to the Philippines and he's going to get hitched. And you're going to be right next to Arms Corps and uh, Rock Island. <laughs> and also, they make grips down there for Smith and Wessons and stuff. I might have to uh, have you look at those because uh, the shipping is killer. Just oh, yeah. Throw them in the uh, you know airplane and... What's with all the grips, Jerry? <laughs> Where's the guns, Jerry? Uh, did I miss anybody? All right. I don't think I missed anybody, did I? All right. I don't so, know if I have a chance on the initial visit to get to get over there, but I sure try. If, if not, then when I move over there in June, then I'll definitely be going there. First thing I do is have a whole plate of lumpias. Oh, don't worry. I've got lumpia coming out my ears over there. Yeah. Uh, I posted a link, people. If you want to come on, we can have 10 on here now. My late wife used to make lumpia. She just called them spring rolls. And I know. You got some of those. Yes, she brought some. Yeah. Uh, Fuzzy is here. Hi, Fuzz. Yeah, love me some lumpias. Yep. You can keep the velut. I don't know if you've ever tried it. I but know it is. Oof. In fact, we've been uh, we've been uh, planning. I'm going to get there on the around noon on the 30th. Their mm -hmm. time will be the 29th our time because uh, they're a day ahead. <laughs> but I'm going to get there on the 30th, and we'll get moved into the Airbnb and everything on the 30th. And, then on the 31st, we have to go north of Manila. Where I'm going to be is east of Manila, over towards Antipolo, you know, the, the town I was telling you about, um, <laughs> where uh, Arms Corps, Rock Island is. Uh, but Cainta is halfway in between Manila and Antipolo. And, and you uh, should, hopefully you're doing videos, and I'd like to know what they I, charge for a 1911 down there. Well, I can't buy one. I know, but I just want to know the price in American uh, to see, you know. Well, that's that's why I've, that's why I've got my other channel name up there, Jerry's Life Journey, and uh, that's that's my uh, vlog channel, and I'll be vlogging all of this. But we have to go up uh, where Clark Air Force Base used to be. They call it the the Clark area uh, in Angeles. Most people would say Angeles, but. Uh, we're having a New Year's Eve party up there, and we'll stay the night. I got another Airbnb up there. You know, all these Airbnbs, they cost a lot of money. Uh, and I'm now, uh, oh, yeah, I don't think anybody knows. I am now officially retired. <laughs> uh, and also, I can't read the chat. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, Lakeview Outdoors is here. I forgot to mention him. I didn't yeah, see I, him. I went through too quickly. But anyway... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be blogging all that, all that. But we have to go up to uh, uh, Angeles, up by where Clark Air Force Base used to be. It's now Clark International Airport and Freeport Center. And uh, we are going to uh, uh, have a lechon dinner on New Year's Eve. That's pig. And that's a big thing over there. Uh, they buy a pig, and then they carve it up and serve it and everything. And how do they cook it? It's not in the ground like Hawaii. No, it's roasted over a spit. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Uh, Thor's X is here and Chessboard is back. Taco and French Fries is here. James Pollard's here. Hey, guys. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Yeah. I, I've had a lot of friends from the Philippines. Uh, and Kenny's Filipino. Yep. And they're all great guys, you know. Oh, yeah. And their sense of humor is unique. It's it's awesome. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Yeah, they're, they're some of they're some of the sweetest people. Yeah, but don't piss them off because they can be some of the. <laughs> they, they, yeah. they, they like their machetes, you know. <laughs> no, they they like Uncle Jim. They like Uncle Jim. Well, and he is here, like me. I have. My computer wouldn't let me log in. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Yep, your TV's going, Andy. Do the door routine. <laughs> and your phone's going to go off also. Garage guy is here. Garage guy. Now, now, you're, uh, now Andy, your phone's going to go off right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, airplaning it. Uh, oh, that reminds me. I better mute mine. <laughs> okay. So, it's okay if it rings. We don't care. That's oh, I've been back from my future in-laws and stuff all day. Mm. I, I, I talk to all of them day and night. I'm, I'm telling you, there's some great people. I've, I've actually become really good friends with my future brothers-in-law. Well, that's good. Otherwise, you get the machete. <laughs> or the tree or whatever. Yeah, they like their knives. Uh, I was talking to my uh, future mother-in-law last night, and I told her, I says, yeah, I know in the Philippines, you know, it's customary for the bro for the groom to uh, uh, buy a pig for the family. I says, so I'm just going to host a lechon dinner. And then today, my future brother-in-law, that's going to be my best man, he says, dude, he says, that's what we're having for, for New Year's Eve dinner. <sighs> I said, man, I can't even make a plan. You guys are already three steps ahead of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, some great people. You know, very well-educated people, very affluent family. I mean, I'm not marrying somebody that, that's from the provinces, you know, that lives in a Nippa hut or something, you know. They, these people, uh, in fact, my, the oldest brother of the family, uh, Chico, he's really heavy into real estate. And he's going to be instrumental when I finally am able to sell my house and build a house over there. Uh, he's already found me a plot of property on top of a hill overlooking a beach. <laughs> but it's about four miles away from the beach and it's up on a hill. It's about 1,800 feet. And so you got one heck of a view. You got mountains behind you. And he's already being instrumental in making sure that's where we're going to live. Because he knows that I want my villa on the hill. <laughs> Have you ever called him Chico Wise? No, I just call I just call him brother. <laughs> Chico. Uh, I gotta ask Andy. Uh, you shot your Rossi yet? Nope. Ah, I took mine apart for the first time. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting, but it it was really nice inside, all smooth. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like the one I have. I mean, uh, it is, feels so smooth. Uh, I don't think I have any bar issue inside. But the only issue I had was the gate and the, the area. Where, you know, when you push the gate in, you try to push the pull in, and there was a bar up in there. So, <clears throat> Well, once you take it apart, you can take the gate out. It's just a screw. Yeah, you know, I, I just don't know if... if I'm pushing this, this gate down as far as it'll go. So I don't know that the spring was going to let it go any further than I'm pushing it. Yeah, when you take it out, you can tweak it, but be careful uh, it's casted because yeah. you can see the cast uh, little round holes on, on the inside. And you don't want to snap it. You don't want to bend it back and forth. I did a whole video on it, decided at eh. uh, that video. Well, what's his name? Uh, Guy Canna, TA TV, whatever he calls himself. He had a video out about a week ago. He put out on the on the Rossi and he took it apart, but he didn't show that area. <laughs> it's real easy. It's really yeah, I know, because I'm gonna probably have to pull the uh, the front stock off and uh, pull the tube out. I might have something maybe the tubing in all the way. Or oh, there's a bar in there, like we discussed last time. So, 
Yeah, you'll know when you take it down. Now, it's not a marlin, uh, as far as putting or a Henry putting it uh, together and cleaning your barrel. You got to take her down, and uh, <laughs> and putting it back, you got to put a dummy round in. Yep, I saw all that stuff. But uh, before yeah. I take it down, I want to buy a a metal follower. That's all. Yeah, I was thinking about getting a stainless steel follower in case they crack or whatever. I, I really like it, so it deserves to have some neat parts. They want a lot of money for that stupid piece. Yeah, they do. Uh, we need a friend with a lathe to make them. Yeah. Uh, Baroque Loader is here. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, but uh, they're, they're definitely different, uh, putting them back together. Taking them apart, you just... Uh, you know, the lower part was really tight. Everything was nice and tight, but uh, very minimal wear for having as many rounds as I put through it. And everything is smooth, except for where they worked on the uh, ejector. Uh, Mr. Happy got happy with a little tool there on the breech face, but it doesn't affect anything. So I just kind of cleaned stuff up and did a few things, but didn't go crazy for now. Yeah, I'll have to, until I take it apart, I won't know, but I'm just dying to shoot it. And it's like, uh, today would have, it would have been a day to go, but we had other plans for today already, so I couldn't deal with it. Tomorrow, tomorrow is supposed to be close to 60, but it's going to rain all day. Uh, garage guy is here. Sorry, garage guy. Who else did this? Yeah, well, you got to get out. I'm sure it's killing you. And uh, Thorzex is here. Hey, Thorzex. Hey, Dave. Y'all remember Jerry? Yeah. Yes, remember Jerry. So when you move over to the Philippines, you're going to be able to get uh, service like on your phone so you can join in the chats or what's up, Jerry? Uh, I'm going to probably be using, uh, well, in fact, I'm going to download StreamYard because I'm going to probably, with my other right. channel, probably going to be involved with expat uh, live chats, and they use StreamYard quite a bit there. So I'm going to probably download it, so I should be able to get straight on uh, with StreamYard. Yep, you can do the free thing uh, and host and do stuff. So yeah. Um, so, are you going to be anywhere in the vicinity, like of Subic? Uh, just east of Manila for right. Oh, okay. Uh, but when we go up to uh, Clark, uh, we're hoping to move up there this summer after my stepdaughter um, is finished with school this summer. We have a house up there that we're we've been invited to live in, okay. so. Uh, we'll probably go up to the Clark area, and that's where okay. I'd really like to build a house. We will want to know what ammo costs there, what a 1911 costs there, uh, just to see, you know, sometimes where the factory is, it costs you more than it does, you know, exporting it. But it should be less because the prices are different. Well, again, I, I can't buy one because I'm a foreigner, but yeah. for uh, I've got a family that I'm marrying into that are very uh, gun friendly, mm -hmm. and they want me to give them some instruction on on handguns. I says, "Who's going to give me instructions?" <laughs> uh, but there are some firearms of my collection that's probably going to get lost at sea. Mm. We don't talk any more about that. Hobbies is here. Oh, and by the way, you see my, I got my ducks out here. In a row. I got my ducks in a row. <laughs> you got the, the blue one. I'm trying to remember what the blue one is. Other side. Yeah. We're getting more backwards. Yeah, well uh, Jason, nope. you know. What's the O for? I don't know what the O's for. Okay. I it was in a drink. <laughs> it was in a drink? Oh, wow. That's like Timothy's bar right there. Jason, 
Mexican restaurant up on the east side of Salt Lake, and you go get this hurricane glass, and it's got like six different types of booze in it, and there's a duck floating on top of it. So. And for broke loader, that would be one hell of a duck launch <laughs> after a few. Um, it, I want to say that Uncle John is here, but he can't, he doesn't show up in the side, so... He's got issues. I tried everything. So uh, he's trying a new account. Jerry, um, Jason from uh, Jason, the Scottish American, he kind of wanted to know what can you take with you over there? And I mean, you know, as far as firearms, uh, nothing. At least not declared. Really? <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you're a foreigner. You're not, you're not allowed yeah. to have firearms. Now, it's not that I can't handle firearms. I'm not allowed to legally own, notice I say, legally own firearms. Mark Thomas is here. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a bummer, but I, I understandable, you know. Well, I'm going to be liquidating everything in my house uh, from March until May. Are you going to do uh, the gun thing? Uh, what's, what's it called? Damn it. I'm a member. Hmm? Gun broker? No, the local one. Uh, not, not KSL. Uh, um. All, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, Tony can do that one. I just went brain dead. I was just looking at stuff on there recently. It's all private sale. <clears throat> Lever action. Jim, Jim, right Jim, Jim, look, I saw from the same thing. The harder you think about it, the more it gets blocked. The more that brick wall seems to go up to the sky and you can't get through it. I know I go through the same thing. The and you more just you let it go for a minute and then all of a sudden it'll come right to you. And the more you retired, it happens. Jerry's, Jerry's going to find out about that. And he's going to say, what? What primers? <laughs> well, today, I gave away several firearms. Uh, Christmas presents. I gave my AR-15 to my son a couple of days ago. That's a Christmas present. I gave a 30-30, a 30-06, uh, two 22s away today to my daughter. And her boyfriend. Oh, it's uh, Utah Gun Exchange as well. Yeah. See, Thor's is right. It came back. But there's a lot of firearms I'm going to put up on the on the gun exchange. Yeah. And try and get rid of them. I was really worried before this week uh, about how I was going to sell everything on two days off every week. And then it started getting to where I didn't even have one day off every week. So I just decided it's time to retire. Right. Yeah, when I moved, I did them all at once for sale, and that might have looked really bad in today's climate. Uh, you know, like I'm a dealer or something, mm -hmm. uh, it might have looked really bad because I, I can't even remember how many, but there was a lot. Well, I just got a couple of rifles all set up for long range and haven't even had a chance to go out there and see if I can bang the 1500 and the thousands. Uh, West Covina Dodge is here. Hey, Pat. He's, he's cooking on. So, yeah, uh, you can throw them on Utah Gun Exchange. Uh, most of those people are up by you anyway, you know, because me, it's like, ah, two, two hour drive, forget it, you know. I don't even know what to ask for any of this stuff. Uh, you, they can make you an offer if it's, you know, ask reasonable. Well, my banker friend made me a good offer on my on my Henry forty five Colt today. Okay, uh, that's one that's one less firearm I have. What is? Show sure you guys the shadow box. Nice shadow box, Dave. Oh yeah. See if I can get this new here. It's got lights in it. 14-2, the old K38. It's 
got all the medallions from all the different uh, commands, from all the different submarines that I worked on. Mm-hmm. I got presented with the American flag for my uh, for my uh, notorious service. And uh, I got a bunch of other stuff, too. But the guys over there in the woodwright shop, they built this down there at Bangor. They made it for me. This is all custom made, you know, right down to the submarine. You know, that's a trident. That's oh, a that's what that was. Okay. Yeah. It's got lights in it and everything. You can, it's got a remote control. So you can, uh, you know, go through the different modes and everything like that. Hmm. Mario is here. Hey, Mario. You got a link down here if you want to come on, Mario. Anyone on the side, if you want to come on, you can come on. So come on. Uh, yeah, come on, Mario, after the after getting the bug. That's pretty cool, Thor. Yeah, I gotta put this up. Yeah, before you hurt your shoulder again, dude. Oh, yeah, don't use the left arm, right arm, left arm, right, right arm. Yeah, that would suck if you tore your arm holding that up. Well, I've had two major shoulder injuries in four years. Because if you remember when we came down for that meetup at your place, I was in in a sling. And then this past summer, another shoulder injury. And I just decided my health and my mental health meant more to me than a paycheck you know i just remembered my shoulder was bugging me during the shotgun thing uh before the shotgun but i i shot the shotgun with a messed up shoulder i totally forgot it hurt now it went away so i got lucky there <laughs> i also i also want to uh uh say that julio is uh you know recovering from uh surgery and best wish, uh, wishes to Julio, and he didn't lose his eye, so that's good. So, everyone, in your thoughts for Julio? Yeah, I spoke to him Thursday. Yeah, so he's you know he was in pain when I texted him, but uh, at least you know he's not going to be a pirate, okay, with the patch on his eye. So he's got uh, a lot a bad headache issue though. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully everything goes well with Julio. Obviously, he couldn't come on tonight, but it was great having him on uh, last week. Julio lost his eye. No, he. It, it. There was a threat of him losing his eye. So. Oh. Yeah. He had a, he had a tumor up in here. And luckily, they didn't have to go in that way. And uh, uh, Warsaw Patriots here. So, yeah, I forgot to mention that at the beginning about Julio. So, uh, Julio, if you're watching, hang in there, buddy. If you're not, totally understandable. So, I'm glad uh, for Julio in that case. I just hope he gets rid of the pain. Well, I I can tell you from life experience, it's no fun losing an eye. Why did you lose one? I lost an eye when I was six years old. No, Jerry, you don't have a glass eye. No, but I'm blind in it. I don't have a lens in it. Okay. I was going to say, I saw you in person and I didn't notice it. You're pretty sneaky. And it would have been a good party joke. Hey, Uncle Joe, hey, check this out. Oh, I no, you're shooting. Yeah, this is what I would do. I'd be shooting and, and I'd let my eye roll on the, the bench and let you see that. It goes in the ground and it's like, oh, crap. Oh, snap. Yeah, you would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a sucker for a prop, okay? That would have been the major prop right there. Well, I've, I've done everything. <laughs> Everything with one eye that they say I can't do. So which eye are you blind in? Left. I'm right-handed when I shoot. All right. I can't shoot (laughs) left-handed. I wouldn't even be able to find the rifle or the gun. Well, I I know a lot of people that shoot with their non-dominant eye. 
uh, you know, they're over. But yeah, you adapt. And I, I think I do just fine with only one. I can't do it with two. So that's whatever. that's the advantage I have. I don't have to coordinate two eyes. Yeah. So, um, Uncle John, if you're out there, uh, you know, at least you tried getting on here. I don't know what I don't know what the YouTube deal is with some people that can't come on. Vanessa had the same problem. Uh, maybe she can say what fixed it. I don't know. But I was trying to come on. I was trying to come on through Chrome. And it wouldn't let me. I had to come in through Safari because I've got an iPhone. Well, wow, that's weird because I'm using Chrome right now, I believe, on this. <laughs> Otherwise, I use Safari. It's safer. Yeah, well, they, it wouldn't let me come in through Chrome. Uh, it wouldn't let me come in through Go Google LLC. Uh, <laughs> Safari is my only other choice, so that's where I, how I can mm. Okay. How you been, Andy? Hanging in there, just doing my thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm Scotsman, I'll I'll get back to you on that. But, uh... Oh man, I'm sorry. Know about Red Raider. I haven't talked to you in a couple months. Yeah, as we get older, uh, everyone, I, I'm surprised I'm here. Everyone's, you know, stuck uh, dropping like flies. Well, that's why I retired while I'm still young enough to enjoy it. I thought it'd be first, one of the early ones, you know, with my bad habits I went through, but uh, I don't know. And you kicked one of them. Yeah, I did. 69 days, people. Tomorrow is 70. All right. I'm proud of you. I didn't count, but my wife brought it up. She goes, 69. She texted me. I was like, oh, that's a good number to talk about. Oh. You thought, you thought it was an invitation, huh? <laughs> I don't know if she even knows what that means. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, wow, one chat is faster than the other. Let's take a shot and celebrate, Pat says. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll, Let's I'll take a shot and celebrate. <laughs> that sounds like Jet. That sounds like Pat. Well, I'll drink to that. I got my coffee right here. Yeah, Christmas is probably tough, but no, no nog schlagen for me this Christmas. I do love my nog on Christmas. Actually, my wife said uh, she was talking with my son. They were shopping, and she goes, "Should we get him some eggnog?" And then they both looked at each other and said, "No," because then he's going to want the rum. <laughs> well, yeah. I said, Very yeah, nice. don't, don't get me eggnog. It's no good without the rum in it. So why would you? Yeah, I don't want that. I'm, I'm more used to it without the rum than I am with it. Uh, well, I used to tear up my stomach, too. So That's, yeah. one, that's one thing that uh, is cheaper than here. Is alcoholic beverages cheaper here? No, it's cheaper there. Oh, yeah, and they can import it halfway around the world and still, cheap, right? You get a bottle of uh, uh, a 750 milliliter bottle of Jack Daniels for excuse me for about two thirds the price you can get it here. Taxes, or are they brewing it down there? Oh, it's tax, man. That's all it is. I wonder if they have home tax, hooch. Tax the living out of us. Do they have their own hooch down there? 
all the time. Mm. Like and, you know, their own style of uh, booze. There's a cup. There's a couple of kinds of beer over there that that they seem to really like, and and there's a couple of uh, vodkas. Well, a vodka and a rum that they make there, and they're supposedly pretty good. I'll find out here in about a month. <laughs> I think what Jim's kind of going at is that like Filipino, you know, uh, rice wine or. Uh, you know stuff like yeah, that yeah. you know because they have like, a lot of berries and stuff over there yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's like the japanese have sake they're known for that and then what about oh, I don't, i'll tell you what if it's anything of what <laughs> i got from saudi arabia we went down to the filipino compound and got some of their booze <laughs> that stuff was green oh <laughs> took took two hits of that and i don't remember until the next day and all i remember the next day is my head hurt yeah as i recall they had good beer in the philippines san miguel and uh red stripe i think hmm. all right it's garage time hang on a second yeah, that's about what i gotta do oh. so i got that list of values I got and I went through all the bre all the stuff and there's only a couple I can't figure out what I'm going to use it for but, uh, I got IMR 720 and an IMR 4350 and then I got uh, <coughs> An old a Winchester action pistol. Action pistol. Yeah. Um, Not much info on that one. Yeah, it's just there is. Hmm. I only I found a nine millimeter some data on that. Oh, one guy is here. Hey, old one guy. How's it going? 4350. Andy, did you say that you got some? What? Andy, you said you got some uh, 7828? 7828. You, you ended up getting some IMR 7828? Yeah. Uh, I wasn't able to find any information on it. That's that's real good in 300 mag. That's real good in 300 mag. It's a magnum powder. Oh, yeah. That's the only thing I saw, but I don't have anything in that caliber. You know, and, uh, right. and uh, 4350 is another one, IMR. So IMR 4350 is a sealed can. <coughs> and I got a bunch of good stuff, but I mean... Uh, <clears throat> Are you buying somebody's estate sale or something, Randy? No, I got a guy that's moving, and uh, an in-between friend. You know, one guy asked, "You know, anybody that's into reloading?" And he said, "I only know one guy, so it was me." So we got in touch. I bought a square D. <coughs> a square D. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. That's the dilemma I have with me moving. Yeah. I can't take powders and primers and things like that over with me so i got i've got a i've got an unfortunate uh subject that i'll probably dump it all on him but I got, you know i got a good i got a real good deal on the square deal b uh it was basically 250 bucks uh i didn't get primer tube and i had to buy Dylan, Dylan's warranty, yeah, both, that's a good bullshit warranty. I have to buy uh, the case pins, whatever you call them, the whole, you know, the, the yeah. diamond pins, whatever they call them. I have to buy it. He had three different pins in there. By the way, I'm, I got them in from Dylan, and the stuck case went away. Totally. So hmm. it's an alignment issue with the wrong pins. And, uh, so and then I wanted a new uh, 
I, I said I want to update the original Square Deal B uh, primer catcher. And I said, is a metal bracket? She says, correct. And I said, and it's a slide-on cup. She says, correct. I said, well, I want one of each. So she sends me the slide-on thing, but she sends me the old-style plastic of that thing that doesn't even, you can't even hold the uh, thing on it. And, and again, I, they charged me for every single piece. There was nothing, nothing they gave to me. Sliding piece. They have the Square Deal P. The original had a, 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 a piece of plastic shaped like an L. And then, uh, you know, it was like, a, you know, a piece of aluminum, let's say an L piece came down about two inches. And then it comes out on an angle. And then it had these two pins. And that's where the cup snapped onto. Okay. And uh, his cup, he had the cup, but the, that plastic piece was broke. So they sent me the wrong, I asked for a new cup and a new bracket because the new one's metal. It just screws on. It's like a flat plate and the new, the prime cash bucket just slides onto it. Hmm. So they, uh, they sent me one and one. It's like, okay, that's great. So I can make the old one work and the new one I ordered the bracket. I went online, spent some more money and ordered some stuff. Then I ordered the uh, sizing uh the padded through uh die a standard size one so i could put it on another press and use that powder measure and we'll see we'll see but but it's dropping that winchester powder that nothing drops is if this is the only thing i have that'll drop that power accurately so. gunswater is buffering again like last week that's weird Anyone else buffering? Nope. nope. Gunswater's buffering again. It's probably your own connection or something. We got a lot of good powers in it. No, oh, Andy, Andy, Andy started to work. We're breaking up too. Well, Zach. Well, that's not buffering, though. It's just yeah, but he's breaking. Yeah, I'm just saying he's breaking up. That's. Yeah. Okay, but uh, I got a lot of good powders, but you know I don't do a lot of thirty oh six reloadings. And a lot of the stuff is for thirty oh six, old Winchester seven sixty. That's good powder. Okay. Uh, what else? H three twenty two. That's a two two three. IMR forty two twenty seven. Two good. full two pounds sealed cans. Good one. For 223 is where I can come up with. Uh, I use 335 in several different calibers. Oh, yeah, that's that's one I gotta look for. Yeah, well, I have 335. That's not a yeah, that's uh, my favorite powder, you know. I have that, but uh, I got some <coughs> I mean, H110, I got a full sealed container. Uh, like I said, the IMR, IMR 4227. I got two pounds of that sealed containers. I got bullseye, three containers, one sealed, and two of them are about half full. In the old cases, uh, unique, a full, a full container sealed. BLC2, full pound sealed. That's one of my favorites. And... Uh, like I said, the 7828, IMR 7828, I haven't come up with low data for anything that I would shoot anyway. Like you said, it's a Magnum thing. I think that's what it was. Uh, 4320, another for 3006, 4064, which is my favorite for 3006. But I'm not loading those kind of loads anymore. I'm not loading full loads anymore. So it's almost wasted. Uh, 4198, and I've got basically two pounds of that. Uh, okay, uh, I have the old, and I got a can of Winchester 540, which is what HS6, same as HX, HS6, I think it is. Gosh, darn nine millimeter. I loaded, I have one and a half pounds of that. So, I mean, I got, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I got blue dot 296, uh, H335, H110, 
Winchester 760, H322, uh, Bullseye are unique, BLC, you know, so many all the IMR powders, you know. But, uh, all right, there wasn't a lot in some of those, so it's not a big deal, except I don't really shoot full loads in 3006, so uh, I may, I have, I'm going to see if I can come up with some loads. I think those are need a heavier bullet, so the zinc is out. Okay, uh, uh, David is here and Jag is here. Uh, David, uh, when in doubt, uh, try eBay. There's a lot of uh, people selling holsters on eBay that uh, you, you might not find like at other uh, regular distributors. You know, they make their own. So uh, try eBay. Um, let's see, you need a light and a dot. Yeah, so you might find something there. I don't have a, a PO one, so I don't know. I think Chico has one with a dot on it. <clears throat> hey, uh, thanks for the invite, uh, Uncle Jim. Mm -hmm. How you doing there, Thor? Still going through the pain? Doing okay, man. He's got a heat pad. Electric monkey. Heat okay. with my friend. Man, I'll tell you what. I, I've got a heating pad that's always close to my bed. That was I'm always my friend. Every shoulder injury I get, man. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what happened to me, Jerry? Um, my arm actually got ripped right out of my body. Yep. I mean, completely detached from the humerus bone to my my shoulder bone. Everything just got ripped out. Uh, the uh, rotator cuff got destroyed. My uh, bicep and my tricep got ripped out of my rib cage and all balled up down in my arm. It was it was a mess. How did that happen? So here I am. Uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, on a on a semi truck trailer, you know, where you got the side doors. You know, they're, yeah, yeah. they're the size of a of a sliding glass door. And what happened is that I reached down to go ahead and undo one of the latches. I undid the latch, and the wind was blowing outside like it does, you know, down here on the canal. And it just took that door, and it took me and everything. It threw me out on the bull rail over here. Oh, shit. So I went flying through the air doing somersaults and ended up hot. Yeah, and I was servicing a generator at that time, so I had... I had to go and grab somebody while I was injured and had to secure what I was doing. It was a real mess. And, you know, they, they ended up calling the end. Yep, he's frozen out. And that's what happened. That was the beginning of the end right there. Uh, like trailer doors in the wind. I've had him come back, smack me upside the head, knock me about out. Still, thank God, man, they're still alive. Yeah. Uh, and you wonder yeah, why I killed, got killed real easy. Uh, uh, what was the process of the surgery? Was it pretty painful, of course, too? I mean, uh, did they seek medical you know, advice and all that for your arm? Who, me? Yeah, yeah, like, you know, after the accident, I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I mean, after after that, I went to the emergency room. And then uh, once I went into the emergency room, I had to wait for a while for a surgeon to uh, do the job. They had to really kind of look at it. I had to have, you know, scans and all kinds of stuff done of it. Shit. And then they scheduled me for a surgery, and that was the last January. And they went ahead and put a great big steel bar in my arm. I still have it in my arm right now, and now they want to take it out. But right now, I'm fighting with the government because, you know, the way things are right now with the medical thing, it's just a mess. I mean, you know, 
uh, it, 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 it's, it's crazy. You know, that they, they don't want to end up paying for things that are unnecessary. I get it. But, you know, I ended up having to go to Seattle uh, last week and see one of their doctors, their government doctors. He looked at it. He wrote up a report. Nice guy. And, uh, you know, he knows I'm not screwing around and he agrees with everything that the surgeons that I have are saying. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just waiting on some OKs to come through for that and I can get my other surgery done. Once I get my other surgery done, that's pretty much it. That's all they can do for me. Right but, on. Uh, it looks as though I'm going to be paralyzed. You know, uh, yeah, I'm going to be paralyzed from being able to reach up over my head and stuff like that. Is this the way it is? That's the cards I got. Yeah, ouch. Yeah, this last injury, it took five months. Yeah, to well, you know, that's the way it is. It took five months before work. Yeah, stopped. and you know what? Uh, the most painful. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Yeah, you ended up having to go through the state. Yep. Yeah, but Jerry. Well, I'll imagine it'll be even worse. Yeah. See, I ended up, I ended up having to deal with with the feds. Yeah, I ended up having to deal with the feds, so that was that's even worse because I'm not I'm not covered by the state Illinois, it's uh, OWCP uh, right. through the Workers Compensation Act. Uh, <coughs> coincidence! I was in Seattle last. Year. <laughs> I was in. There's a link. Anyone else want to come on? I dropped my duckies. Yeah, uh, I'm in for the bionic shoulder. I've yeah. seen some bionic uh, attachments that are pretty impressive these days. Well, you know, one thing that most surgeons will tell you is they want to avoid putting anything metal in your body that's a permanent fixture because once once they do that, then, you know, your body reacts to that over the years. And, you know, uh, they, they, they really want to stay with El Natural as much as they can. They want to rebuild what's there and, and, and make it heal rather than take it out. And then replace it. You know, there's there's certain things they can't do anything about, like like knees and things like that, where you know you got bone erosion and all, all that other stuff. Yeah, they they've got to replace it. But uh, this right here, they were able to glue it all back together and stick it in there. And now I'm just hoping that my body will do its thing, and I can. I don't know through physical therapy, maybe I can get a little bit more range of movement. <laughs> I was lucky to have good physical therapy, but man, it's sure painful. It's oh. not easy. <clears throat> yeah. Well, so, the, the, one of the biggest problems we have with our healthcare system right now is that, you know, far, farm uh, pharmacy want you know big farm wants to set their price, and then the insurance companies they want to set their price. And, and they don't. What, what's happening is that our quality, yeah, our quality of our healthcare system is suffering from that because, you know, they they want to get you in and get you out or just do this. You know, the, yeah, you're right. They want to work it into this little window of what they're going to do for you for the price. And yeah, our our healthcare system is suffering from that. That's the reason why I'm having to go through all this stuff with. You know, you know, the feds having to go to their doctors and them looking at it because they don't want to end up paying for procedures or things like that uh, uh, that they feel are unnecessary, whatever that might be. So, yeah. And then all the claims you have to do. So you have to do all that online. Yep. And it's, it's messed up, dude. It's it's a pain in the ass, believe it. It's sad yeah. they can't just do it one system and done and over with, get it over with. Oh, that'd be too easy, Warsaw. Well, there is one system if you want to go that way. 
if you want to pay for it, you just hire a, an attorney to handle it, you know, and then just let him handle it, you know, and just say, look, you take yep. care of all the billing, you take care of everything. And all I'm going to do is just sit back. But, you know, that's expensive. <laughs> you know, that, that you know, money in the long run, you end up paying for it. And you really shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that complicated where you have to have a, you know, an attorney handle your shit. It's, it's messed up. This is supposed to be a program that's for the people. <clears throat> I mean, um, since we're talking medical, have you heard about this AI that now pushing on operating on people? Mm -mm. Yeah, so if you're getting the surgery, there's going to be possibly an AI that's going to define what you need to get cut up and all that. It's like, I am not relying on a machine to actually work on me. No. Hell no. Not until they get the uh, auto-driving cars working properly. <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on that topic, dude. <laughs> Not until they can get the electric cars to park without catching on fire. Did you see the? Did you see what they put into law now by Congress? No, uh, which now? By 2026, every vehicle that's brand new out of a factory has to have an AI defining if you are pretty much impaired or you're disabled by alcohol or under the influence and it can shut off your vehicle anytime. Uh, people want to know why I want to get out of here. Did well, you see all the out uh up the loss I guess or whatever the they're showing all the electric cars that died on the road because it was too <laughs> cold. 18, minus 18 degrees, the, car, the battery just fails. That's it. And we had a bunch in Wyoming last winter. They turned into instant bricks, frozen bricks. Yeah. We, we had to laugh at a couple. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. This is what I find. Now, this is what I find that's crap, all right? For the last 50 years, they've been shoving this electricity crap up our ass about electric knives, electric toasters, electric ovens, you know, electric, you know, heating for your home, uh, electric everything. I mean, just electric everything, Ele you know, e electric everything, coffee pots, you name it. And then they come out and they say, oh, oh, oh. Well, we're using way too much electricity. Oh, you know, we can't be doing this. You know, we're having brownouts. We're having this other stuff going on here. We have to go ahead and we're going to have to cut back. You know, we're going to have to do, do even less. And then you get this guy in there that's saying, oh, no, no, we're going to have to have electric cars now. This is a bunch of bullshit. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Am I right? I mean, right. am I wrong? Oh, no, nope. you know what I mean? You're not wrong at all. That's what's putting this country in the dumper. Well, it's that's putting their, it in the dumper. Plain that's their agenda. Plain just like every, that's their it's agenda. Flying freaking bastards that are running this. Oh, back on the gas stove kick. Unless <laughs> not forget the farce of it all day. That I'm is. Gonna chill out. Out. I'm going to chill out. I'm going to chill out. It's no, let's, let's hey. Just realize it's their agenda, like everything else they're throwing at us. Just wait, see what happens. <laughs> Doing it enough on the education. It's monopoly. It's bed. monopoly. Supply and demand. Okay. So monopoly thing, and supply and demand. That's it. Uh, one, one thing that these greenies are not talking about: how does that electricity get to all of these things? It's got to come from a power plant. It's coal and oil. Likely yeah, burn. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, they think that the that, that unicorn farts is what causes all this electricity, you know? And it's it's their agenda, agenda <laughs> and we only have a little while to find out if the country's going to be straightened out or not. If not, it's going to get ugly. It's going to be ugly. I mean, at least we don't have bad construction like China. I don't know if you guys have ever seen what they make out of their stuff. Oh, yeah, like cr crumbling concrete? Uh, tofu dredge constructions. Oh, well. Yeah. They make a really good uh, uh, bamboo uh, scaffolding, though. 
They do. They do whole buildings on bamboo scaffolding. They made with foundation and building materials that are poorly mixed due to a lack of funding. Yeah, that's Plastic right. Project yeah. need and management swallowed up money due to rampant corruption. They've been the, the world's second largest. The rate. result is uh, living quarters and where was it worse? Um, collapsed, like bridges, roads, and buildings. Uh, in 2008, an 8.0 magnitude earthquake took many buildings but under. But uh, they can't even have it. Many were totally dragged across. They killed apart. thousands of students. Second largest skyscraper in the world. Yep. I mean, I'd hate to be the guys living in China buying these buildings and these skyscrapers and these rooms. Because a lot of the stuff's like, with the walls inside is all cardboard and messed up stuff. It's not even real drywall. Yep. One earthquake, take care of that. Yep. And who's paying re uh, reparations for all that? Definitely not the communist government. They print their own money. They they got plenty of money. They just print more. Like our government. They have plenty. They just print more. Yeah, but question is, when is the next big short 2.0 going to be coming in? Yeah. Well, we'll find out in a little while. I can't wait. At least the stock market's up, so that's good. The stock market? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stock market's up, baby. So our stock market's up, but this, uh, the money in China is going down. <laughs> that's kind of yeah. good. They, they over extended themselves and... Uh, Without a certain person in office, they'd really be hurting right now. But we'll see what happens. We just got to stop our government from passing more bills of budgeting to Ukraine. Now, Biden wouldn't get any money that way. All right, so what else we talk about? Less depressing. <laughs> uh, yeah, deal with a Karen. I told you I didn't want to bring it up. What, accounting? <laughs> or oh, I got you. You gotta you gotta be on the happy side, okay? That's how Come on. that's how yeah. you keep that's how you keep kicking, all right? You got to be on the happy side. Look at the bright side, even if even if it's only like that big. Here's a question. Is that a Monty Python quote? The bright side. Of, <laughs> I forget that skit, but I remember the song. Yeah. All of the bright side of life. Doo-doo, 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 doo-doo. <laughs> Uncle Jim, the Willy Wonka of sunshine. I love it. <laughs> hey, can I... yes, Jerry, and he'll be in the Philippines in what about twenty-five days? No, jeez, oh, oh, thirteen. Jim. That reminds me, actually. 13 days, Kenny, if you got relatives over there. Have to give Jerry a hard time. <laughs> you mentioned uh, the Philippines, Jim. Um, do you know what's actually going on over there? Yeah. You talk there about this. Say again? Say again? With the Chinese? <laughs> well, the, the Chinese... Navy or Coast Guards literally spraying water on the Philippine Coast Guard and Navy. Yep. They tried to capsize the one uh, Coast Guard ship. Yep. Well. And there's now, this ship is Batley and the Parasol Islands been going on for years. It's worse. Up. 
And they're still on their water, dude. They're still on their ocean floors. These are traditional Philippine fishing waters, and the Philippine fishermen can't even go and fish there anymore. Yeah, that's some bullshit. Yeah, that, that's been a family talk quite a bit. <laughs> I'll come back with diabetes from eating too much rice, Kenny. <laughs> he, he's going to be right by Arm Score, Kenny. Arm Score and uh, Rock Island. Rock Island Armory. <laughs> just yeah, to China. They always want to take over the rest of the world while they can't be happy with what they got already. I might do well, it. It used to be the Japanese, okay? So everything everything always evolves. But uh, when I was younger, everything cheap was from Japan, okay? And then in the wars, the Filipinos do not like the Japanese. And uh, so now it's the Chinese. Same deal. I have a little, what do you call it, bedpan made uh, in occupied Japan, yeah. Why I have a little bedpan, porcelain bedpan, I don't know. I should I should use that as a prop. Try to pee in it. <laughs> oh, well. Never mind. I could go grab it, by the way. I know where it is. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. yeah. What, what is a person doing with a tiny bedpan? It's... Whatever. Do I put it inside his pillowcase? It's about this big. That's why it'd be funny to try and pee in it. So, uh-oh. Wow, this is weird. Something happened here. Are you there, Jerry? I'm here. Okay, so it's working. Uh Screen kind of went dark, lights dimmed for a minute, uh, two <coughs> people went mute. Yep. So, yeah, okay. You and I are the only ones that got our pictures up. Yeah. Got our cameras up. And I was just getting ready to uh, mute my camera, so I go out on the front porch here. But I'll, I'll wait until everybody gets back. Uh, let's see. Electric head works faster. Electric Ed. What's Electric Ed? We used. Oh, okay. And then Gunswater saying worms. I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm so am I. I'm lost. I, I can't. I can't read the side chat. Oh, okay. I'll try and keep the quotes up for you. Well, I have no idea what worms means. Water. I think it might be a cyber technical term. <laughs> I have no idea what they're talking about now. <laughs> I have my mind on bedpans or whatever. Yeah. Now, theoretically, uh, China is not really technically a full communist country, is it? It's also capital. It's, I, I, I don't know. I thought it was all communist. It, it's but I mean, a communist country. It's what? It's a hybrid communist country. Yeah, because Russia and China don't get along really well because they both have different views on Marxism. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the true remnants of communism would be uh, North Korea because if yeah. you pair China with North Korea, North Korea is the king of all of them. So here's a little... Here's a little uh, a little insight into into the beautiful Chinese culture. Oh shoot, I'm not plugged in. Damn it! My uh, they went to Hong Kong for a couple of days. Uh, for a, I guess it was like their little Christmas vacation. As they were coming, they were leaving. They got to the airport. My, I'm going to just call her my mother-in-law because here in another 35 days she will be. <laughs> but anyway, he was carrying a water bottle by the lid as she was going up to the uh, checkpoint. And the commie, he just smacked her hand as hard as he could, knocked the water bottle out of her hand. 
he was looking for a place to throw it. And he just smacked the top of her hand, broke blood vessels in the top of her hand. And she can't do a thing about it against them because, you know, they, they are their own Marxist utopia. So now she's got to she's got to seek medical treatment there in the Philippines to get the back of her hand fixed with all the blood vessels that got broke. Bastards. Act of hard so that it brought tears to her eyes. Oh yeah, they've got they've got great culture there. I told my fiance, I says, don't ever ask me to go to Hong Kong. Was this uh, this was pretty recent? Yeah, just a couple of days ago. In fact, yesterday uh, she was telling me about it last night. Yeah, shit. They just barely got home from Hong Kong. Yeah, because uh, Hong Kong right now is definitely occupied by the Communist Party now. Because before yeah. that, it was actually uh, free from the Chinese yeah, they, Communist Party. They yeah. took it over. Yeah, they took it over. When when Great Britain uh, relinquished Hong Kong back to their independence. In what 1999 or something like that. Yep. Um, the agreement with the Chinese government is they would stay on the Kowloon side of the bay and not uh, indoctrinate the or not uh, bring the communism into Hong Kong itself because Hong Kong was such a, an important trading zone and that lasted about as long as the ink on the paper, right? The um... The sad thing about Hong Kong is right after um, the Hong Kong protest and, you know, they're threatening to come in. Two weeks later after that protest kicked off, um, COVID-19 hit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Isn't that amazing how that worked? Oh, hey, there's a new there's a new uh, strain coming out of China right now. Everybody has got coughs in Southeast Asia. <laughs> it's a mysterious uh, uh phenomenon nobody can pinpoint it what what's causing these coughs but it's getting really prevalent in all of southeast asia they're calling but, it white lung yeah but it's just coughing it's not like coughing fever okay but it's not it's not full-blown covid but it's something else that's mysterious that came from made in china well that's your next weapon that's for sure yeah it's all biological Let's just find out the truth about Dr. Fossey. Oh. No. <laughs> I thought she was a slime bog. His little crooked eyeballs in this crap. <laughs> Thor is a uh, cat. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have good advice. <clears throat> Stay away from people. <laughs> Stay away from people. At their winter in Southeast Asia, they're still in the 80s. Yeah. I mean, it was 87 in Manila today. Yeah. Wow. Or yesterday, anyway. They're sad. They are whatever. How hot does it get there? I mean, in the worst <laughs> I know it's humid. One of the areas we're looking at really close is what they call Visayas. Uh, it's the central part of the island chain, uh, just west of Cebu Island. And one of the ex, one of the expats, uh, one of the bloggers that I am in contact with quite a bit, he was saying it was 116 yesterday. Hmm. That was up on his roof, so I don't know how much the ambient temperature was. You know, yeah. it's probably in the upper 80. Well, you're going to need one of those little fans, you know, out of a leaf. No, because we're, we're going to Baguio, and they call that the summer capital of the Philippines. And I'll probably have to take a jacket there. They're, they're at 5,000 feet of elevation. Hmm. They actually sometimes get snow in Baguio. <laughs> hmm. But uh, we're going to go up there and we're going to check it out. Is this just you guys or are you guys getting a lot of buffering? You guys getting a lot of buffering? No. Really. Gun, Gunswater was. 
I mean, I'm I'm here fine. I'm seeing perfect image. No, no, I am. You guys cut out and go in, and then you know yours was up it. No, maybe I need to go out and come back in. So I'm gonna. Yeah, you you've been roboting off and on, Dave. Yeah, it's connection connections. How come the guy way out on the mountain, away from civilization, has a good connection? Why? Why is this? Mm -hmm. We used to have terrible dial-up. Oh my gosh! Glad we got rid of that when we moved in. Well, I'm, I'm pretty used to video chat because my fiance and I, we sometimes spend eight to twelve hours a day on video chat, and. I'm used to buffering. I'm used to roboting, pixelating, dropouts. What, what do you use? Really isn't all that great. What do you use for internet? I've been using WhatsApp. Never heard of it. What's what? What's the application I use to to video chat with her? We either huh. use Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. Yeah, but what's your internet service? Mine. Comcast, yeah. like what do you use? I've got uh I don't know, they just changed it. Is it on a cable or something or optic mine? Huh? Mine's fiber optic. Oh yeah, yeah. New house fiber optic. Something like that. I mean it's blazing fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's one gig. I don't know. But I know that you can't get any faster than this, supposedly. <laughs> Yeah, ours ours isn't super fast, but it it works. It's just enough. Just enough. Uh, one of one of the things we're looking at if we if we move down to Visayas, uh, to Negro Oriental, um, where my future brother in law's property is that we can get up on the mountain, um, we're going to probably get uh, for our internet. You know, got to keep on in business. You know. Well, you cut out, but you said Starlink, I think. Yeah. We got to keep uh, Elon in business. <laughs> I yeah. love that guy. I like how he's terrorizing uh, the woke generation right now on X. But we are going to be completely off the grid if we if we do build our house there. We'll have well for our water. We'll have septic for our sewer, solar for our electricity, and Starlink for our internet. Cool. Well, this is already being planned into this house. It'll be a nice little villa up on a hill. The ocean will be about four miles away. We can see it down in front of us. It's good to have your own water. Uh, city water turns the frogs. <laughs> this no. That's all mountainous area right there, so... There's always fresh water coming in on the aquifer. Hey, Papa's Place. I've been meaning to do a video on the Savage Cheek Riser for the Savage 22. And we we used we used the wrong file, not your file, uh, Papa's Place. Without the divots, they can get the bolt out. So I'll probably carve that thing up a little bit. I just haven't got around to the video. There's so much good oh man so much to do on you know videos just haven't done it i've been doing chores and stuff and, there, and there's no snow i should be tumbling brass right now it's nice out el nino bud el nino i should be tumbling brass i'm getting worried we need snow for water you know of course i'm home and no snow yeah, I know. This is the first time you've been home and it hasn't rained or snowed here. Well, that's because I'm retired. Uh, maybe that's it, Jerry. Maybe you killed the thing. Now I don't know when you're in town. Oh, and you see this? You see the shirt, Bass Pro Shops? Mm -hmm. So my fiance got me a shirt uh, in the Philippines for Christmas. And it's there, there's a fish over there they call a bangus. And it looks sort of like a bass. So she got me a shirt that says Bangus Pro Shops. Where she had that made or something? Uh, there's a Philippine company that makes them. I saw those online. I said, oh, God, I got to get that. <laughs> Some of my vlogs, 
that I do. <laughs> um, I was supposed to release my weekly video today, but I didn't get it. You, you know what I like about the Philippines, Jerry? Yeah. They make beautiful 1911s in their country secretly. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's an underground market for those, or an underground industry making those. I think it's the same people that make the jeepneys make those. I mean, we're talking scrap metal parts and tensils, and that's it. And they do it. And they work. Guys, I'm going to bail. My wife's been sick all week, and I think I'm finally getting it. Mm. Is Oop. it a cough? It's a cough. <laughs> oh, geez. Not First, it's a cough, and you're smacked on your ass. <laughs> it's a cough. Oh. Okay, Andy, thanks for uh, coming on. Yeah. We'll probably, probably have a short one tonight anyway. There's some uh, really killer fights tonight, UFC, and I'm very interested. Mm. I don't know. They might end early, though, so it might not. Uh, I don't know. UFC, is that still going on? Oh, huge. Yeah. You send that link out again. Let everybody else get on. Yep. We can have oh, a Huge idea. Next week is the Christmas chat. So <laughs> everyone do the Christmas. And Christmas came so fast. I hope you guys got your shopping done for your family. Um. It's too late to order now if you're doing it online. <laughs> try, try sending it to the Philippines. It takes three weeks. Yeah, I know. You're going to have to find something local down there and have them deliver or something. Everybody's already got their gifts. I ordered oh. in October. <laughs> okay. Oh, is Thor still? What happened to Thor? Mm. Try and reboot everything and come back on. Yeah, but he was there, and I was going to click on him, and then he disappeared. Uh, yeah, so tri Christmas came way too fast. So, um, What's one Christmas movie you guys actually enjoyed watching? Well, I usually watch... I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sick of all... There's no new ones, so, I, you know. Just the old ones. Yeah, I've been seen a million times. <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong. I haven't turned on my TV in over a year. Yep. Oh, that, okay, went, Jim? Oh, that went down the wrong pipe. Yeah. Um, yeah, Fred Claus, if you haven't seen that, it's hilarious. It's Santa's bad brother <laughs> gets into trouble and next you know his his brother's got to bail him out out of chicago pd <laughs> <laughs> what's that called fred claus yeah fred claus you got to watch it it's well worth the watch well i'm new for, uh, you know i'm up for anything new as long as it's not you know one way or the other it's comedy okay i like comedy Although nothing has given me a huge belly laugh in a long time, so. Well, do it for old time's sake. Gotta be all jolly in the Christmas mood, even though it's not really there right now. Yeah, well. Uh, we'll get through it. You okay, Jerry? Oh. Uh oh, he nope. clicked the wrong button. <laughs> Let me let me link him again. He did the old Uncle Jim wrong button thing. There he is. I got to stop touching things. I was trying to see how much battery charge I had. I go step out on the porch. Hey, hey Ashley, how's it going? Hope you're all ready for Christmas. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, look out, look uh, out. Hey, Mario. Mario the Mosin. Mario, what's up, buddy? What's oh. up, fellas? How you doing, man? Are you ready for Christmas, Mario? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, there's a. Yeah. How about you, buddy? You had your lights on and everything. So. Oh yeah. I yeah. Do. That's okay. awesome. Yeah, man. How's everything with you guys? Uh, hanging in there. Doing yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Jerry's going to be heading for the Philippines real quick here. Oh, you going to the Philippines, huh? Yeah. Nice, man. That's beautiful there. I'm going to hit the garage. I'll be off camera for a minute. What the hell what kind of picture is that? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Man, that is just scary as hell, man. You know what that reminds me of, Memorial? That that just looks like <laughs> like like a weird Al Yankovic picture. Oh, no, it, <laughs> it, it uh, reminds me of um 007. That's what it is. Yeah. A, a 007 theme video. Oh God. Oh come on, now. come on, man! Don't mess up the classic, man. Come on, man. You you've seen worse. Come on. Oh yes, I've seen worse, but no. I don't so what? What am I going to call you, Uncle Jim? Uncle Jim. Uncle Double Seven. <laughs> I've done a lot worse in videos, and you guys know that. Oh yeah, yeah, man. You have. Um, they yeah. call me Jim. Uncle they call Jim. Me Jim. I've made Mario cringe a few times. He's like, what yes. the hell is this? Yeah, dude. Like one time, dude, I, it was early in the morning and I decided to watch his video. That was not good, bro. Like I needed coffee before uh, watching a video of Uncle Jim. Yeah. It was, uh, it was interesting. That's for sure. Interesting. That's an interesting word. It's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, Jerry, so wh what's, what's making you go to Philippines, bro? What's going on? Get married. Oh, what? Yeah, I'm getting married. Oh, congratulations, man. Oh, you get married in the Philippines. <clears throat> yeah. Congratulations, man. Nice, man. <laughs> well, living down there, too. Was here last time, when she was here last time, she had a problem with her tourist visa. So she can't get back here on a tourist visa. So the whole idea was me going over there and marrying her. And then I can apply for her uh, spouse visa here and yeah. then get over here. Get uh, a prenup, bro. Get a prenup. Okay. <laughs> but I'll probably only be over there a year and a half to two years. And then I'll come back. I'm going to put my house up for rent while I'm gone. Oh wow! But I am selling. Oh, so you're gonna live in the Philippines for two years? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a lot over. cheaper to it's a lot cheaper to live there. I mean, I, I have neighbors that are Filipino, man, and they're they're all like thinking about just moving back over there because it's cheaper. Yeah, I got the, yeah I got three Filipinos, uh, one next to me, one across me. One on the other side, call him the Filipino connection. Jerry, still there, man? Huh? Jerry, you there? His uh, screen cut out. Uh, yeah. There you are. All right. <clears throat> Let me turn this back. Oh, there you I go. dropped my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's on a phone. Uh, it works. <laughs> uh, I'm going over there. I'll be over there on the 30th, uh, their time, 29th, our time. And I will be coming back on the 26th of February. Oh, and then okay. I'm you know, the world's largest yard sale here. Everything <laughs> must go. Nice. I already gave What's away that? a couple of firearms today. Ooh, Fire. don't don't give up. Ooh, ooh, give it that way. Well, firearms. I what, 15 to my son for Christmas. I... <clears throat> uh, Gave my 30 out six and a 30 30 to my daughter's boy, uh, fiance. And I gave my daughter an uh 10 22 and a high point 45. So, uh, high point rifle. Uh, what is that? Mm. 945 or whatever the hell that 995. Mm. I, okay. I, I gave those to her for, for uh, Christmas. I got some of those uh, Rough Rider. Uh, 22 pistols I'll give to my grandkids. Mm -hmm. But I've got a bunch of other firearms <laughs> going. And I was made an offer today on my Henry 45 Colt. So I'll probably sell that one for a thousand. 
You wouldn't happen to have a three inch 13 brown butt, no question, would you? That's what? Three inch 13 round butt, Smith and West. Uh, I don't have any Smiths. Hmm. Well, I mean, I get it, bro. I mean, that's good. And at least, at least your your guns are staying with family, which is good. You know? Well, the the ones that mean something, you know, the ones that have sentimental value. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. the Remington seven twenty two. That my daughter's getting that one too. That was my grandmother's rifle. Oh, okay, that's cool, man. That's good, man. 19, I mean, fifty three. Yeah, I get you. Well, I mean, that's good, the, man. So. As long as you're happy, the, man. I just want you to be happy, man. That's the most important thing, you know. That you're the other the other ones. Like I say, I'm going to sell all those and, and stuff. Mm. And <laughs> I got a lot of reloading supplies. I got to make a trip with and dump all that off. I, you know. Just, I'm not gonna be able to do any reloading over there. Oh. Yeah, that's gonna um, be sad. Uh, can you? It's a question. Can you do uh, certain things like airsoft out there in the Philippines? Sure, and uh, an air rifle. <clears throat> no, actually, you're going to to a country that makes that uh, makes a bunch of 1911s by hand, bro. So I'm the sure illegal you're... stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's the same people that makes the jeepneys that probably uh, fabricate those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen I've seen some of those 1911s. They're nice, bro. I mean, they're really, really nice. Very tight fit, you know. Well, that's I, okay. You know. I'm gonna I'm gonna be next to the uh uh I'm only gonna be not too far away from the Arms Corps National Shooting Range nice. and the Arms Corps ammunition manufacturing plant and the Rock <laughs> Island plant. And yeah, I'm not gonna be too far from there, so they're gun friendly. Oh, and all cool, my man. guns. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a lot of shooting. Yeah. I, just I uh, just do me a favor and, and be a uh, bit careful because I've seen a lot of uh, terrorist attacks over there by that. Uh, Min that yeah. Well, so that's, that's 3,000 miles away. Still. Because we're going to be on Luzon by Manila. Yeah, and, but they're starting uh, to go all over the place, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was a long way away. Uh, yeah. There's no way you can get me to go to Mindanao. Hell, they just had a car bombing here two weeks ago. Yeah, I know. I watched it. Uh, I watched the news on that stuff, and it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Was it it's actual? More... Uh, was it actual bombing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was car bomb. Yeah. I, I hope yeah, it wasn't like are... that. Um, <laughs> like that incident happened in Nova was in New York with that guy that <laughs> went high speed through the border area. No, I don't know about that one. Yeah, they and thought then, it was a terrorist attack, but it wasn't. Well, then right after they had that car bombing, they had that 7.6 earthquake on Mindanao. Oh, yeah, I know. I was watching it because I got the, the app that tells me, because, you know, I live in earthquake country. So this app is actually pretty cool because it lets you know. And it gives you about a second or two. I mean, about a second or two, you know, it's it's life-saving if you're in, a, in an earthquake, man. So, well, the last Last week, in between Luzon and, and uh, Mindoro Island, they had mm -hmm. a 5.6 mm -hmm. earthquake. They had a bunch of 7.0s over there, bro. I was like, what the hell? Well, yeah, those are down to Mindanao. Um, mm -hmm. But the 5.6 was uh, in between Luzon and uh, Mindoro. <clears throat> it was about, uh, I don't know, 180, 200 miles away from Beyonce. She said she went through it. She didn't hear it. But everybody <laughs> talked about it. It, it's one of those things if volcano isn't blowing up then the earthquake or you're going to get hit with a uh uh typhoon so you know what I mean? mm -hmm. yeah no oh yeah or tsunami man but where we where we want to move to they they don't get typhoons uh they're sheltered so yeah. they hit and move away from there so, uh, that's good man they, they get tropical depression but that's about the worst of it and i'll be yeah. going over non thank god yeah but the monsoons these are there's fucking horrible bro i couldn't deal I, with that shit i know because she's always talking about the flooding and things oh it's fucking horrible there but and we're then, gonna we're gonna be up on a mountain so we're not too worried about it okay. you can do a bobsled run in the rain oh my god don't don't encourage him uncle jim yes no. get a couple inner tubes and oh make a bob 
Um, <laughs> then, then, then we'll see Jerry's I Fallen and I Can't Get Up video and shit. I'll be like, hey, like, hey fucker, they ain't got no life alert in fucking Philippines. You shit out of luck. <laughs> Yeah, no sure. yeah, there, there's yeah, medical. That's one of the things that kind of concerns me is, is mm. and things. Uh, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't be concerned with the medical aspect of it. I mean, if you're like far from a medical facility, yeah, but they're no, going to be really close to one. Oh, then I wouldn't worry about it. You know, and I told my family that uh, this Airbnb, uh, hey, Lake View. Uh, the Airbnb that I've got, it's it's uh, two blocks away from a hospital, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's got a first aid kit and a fire extinguisher. So, hey man, <laughs> one out of five fucking good. nurses here in California, Filipino, I can tell you, the motherfuckers are good. Um, what's uh, do you have any knife laws in, in Philippines? Any what? Knife laws, you know, if you wanted a pocket knife, you wouldn't get you know rest for carrying. Mm, I don't know about that, bro. I'll have my knife with me. It's legal. Calm down, killer. They all love knives. They can't have knife laws. They all love knives. <laughs> yeah, they 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 yeah. have. Well, Filipinos in general, they like like weapons in general, man. They like. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a certain countries don't like certain things, though. That's the problem. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm allowed to carry my knife. It's under six uh, centimeters, but. <laughs> it's within. I think. It, I think it's got to be with. I think it's got to be under eight centimeters or something like that. Mm. Uh, link <clears throat> doors is here. If you want to come on, there's a linky. I, I tell you this much, though, Jerry. I'd rather be in the Philippines than being up in Canada, dude. That'd be a place that you would not want to be in right now. Hey, Canada. Hey, <laughs> baby, no way. I don't know, man. Like my homie used to say, hey man, we just get ourselves to no better not say it. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Like, oh, no, no, no. I want to keep that to myself because we have we have females or uh, <laughs> I don't feel like upsetting people. Hey. <laughs> hey, there's Lake View. Yeah, Lake View. You want to come on? There's a little. Hey, what are you doing in the frozen tundra in Utah, fucker? There's three Utahns here. I know. I don't know. I don't know. In fact, in uh, my future brother in law is not too far. Well, no, he's over the mountain from you. He's up in Apple Valley. No, oh, that's a shithole. Well, well, what? That's that's where his mother lives. And he has his mom in a couple of years. He's the other. He's the other. What they call those, uh, well, it, foreigner in the family. So, foreigner. Yeah, he, he's the other American in the family. Oh, yeah. He and I, we've been talking a lot. We can't wait to hook up. In fact, leaving LAX the same time I'm leaving uh, San Francisco, and <clears throat> Taiwan. I'm flying to Korea, so our flights across somewhere over the Pacific. And then we both leave our uh, Asian uh, stopovers and head for the Philippines at the same time. But they're landing in Clark, <coughs> Clark used to be north of Manila, and I'm mm. landing in Manila, So <coughs> we're having you stuck in uh, San Francisco. You better stay in the airport. Yeah, I I got no. Yeah, the, the airport's nice, Uncle Jim, but uh, the city itself is fucking trash, man. Yeah. The airport- Still have Harry Krishnas at the at every uh, uh, airport. Mm-hmm. Harry Krishnas, do they still have them at every airport? I don't know. I never. I, I guess you find out. Back when I came back from uh, that one sandbox back in '91, I said I'd never leave the country again. <laughs> you lied your ass off. Yeah. <clears throat> Just joined. I'm retired. Officially retired. Are you officially retired now? Yeah. Nice, buddy. My official last day next Friday, but they have to pay me off from my vacation and stuff before they can make it official. But, but yeah. Nice. I'm re- right on. How many years did you work there? 
Uh, only six and a half. Mm. Uh, is, and it, my, is that Bruno? Yeah, that's Bruno. Is Bruno. that Bruno squeezing that toy? Yeah. <laughs> Bruno. Say hi, Bruno. Oh, that's a good boy. Oh. Good boy, Bruno. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's got his bed over here because he doesn't like, he's so dead clingy with me. Well, he was not. Like, huh? Not the reason why. Mom banished him. Oh, mom banished him. <laughs> <laughs> he was eyeing that electrical for a minute there. I was getting nervous. No, he's fine. Electrical. Yeah, um, no, he's fine. Marty, the last uh, pug dog I saw when I was a kid um, was named Otis. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they're great dogs, man. Ooh, this one's super clingy, though. <laughs> yeah. He's super clingy. And today uh, I was uh, I was walking in and we saw an old black black pug, and it was cool. Cause I kind of thinking about getting another pug, but I want a black one. And I was like, oh, it was cute. If, if you like pugs, you might like a French bulldog. Mm, no, actually, pugs are bigger. Like uh, my neighbor has a French bulldog, and Bruno punks him all the time. He pretty much sits on him like he's fucking WWE on his ass. It's fucking funny. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, he likes the uh, fire extinguishers. I saw you last video. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, the, the fire hydrant. Yeah. So, um, here's a big uh -huh. question. Does he like bacon? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would, that would, come on. All dogs, all dogs like pork products, bro. He goes crazy for ham, too. Oh, yeah. Me too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's a very clean dog. Man. In fact, that's going to be our uh, that's going to be our New Year's Eve dinner is lechon. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and also because a lot of those uh, a lot of those uh, islands have a lot of wild pigs are kind of used to eating ham and pork and stuff. Yeah. I, my future mother-in-law, we need to cut the belly out. I'm going to make it into bacon, and I'll show you guys <laughs> what bacon is. <laughs> I'm going to pick you up, you fucking fat-ass dog. Man. Hey, Fuck uh, fat. hey, Mario, at least you got a, a, a pug dog and not a uh, something that a friend of mine told me his buddy had. You know what he had? Well, what do you have? All right, so he says, hey, uh, buddy, uh, you want to see what I have instead of your dog? He says, what do you got? Goes into the room, opens the door, and, and it's growling towards him. It's like, he closes the door immediately and he says, Sorry, he just we don't have a fucking me. bobcat. This thing I almost, like, face. fucking went after him. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Look at that thing, Jim. <laughs> yeah. No, but that. owning a bobcat as a pet is not really something I would ever do. Uh, Puma? Was it like a fucking mountain lion or some shit? No, it's a bobcat, dude. Those things will tear you apart, man. Fuck that shit. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I saw I saw Lynx once. So I was over here. I was, uh, me and my wife were actually checking out like uh, Central California. And we were like fucking door the Explorer door open that bitch all up in the little trails. And yeah, there was a Lynx there. It was uh, it beautiful. I just got scared, but they're like tiny. They're like about the size of a of a of a cat. Yeah, they're not that big. No, big but a, but a, a big bobcat is like the size of two dogs. You do not want to mess with them. Oh them. yeah, no, no, yeah. That's so, okay. I was taking my garbage out here a couple of months ago and got it out to the road and turned around. And there's a coyote standing in between me and that. <laughs> Whoa, nice dog. Oh, yeah, I know, but there's a. Uh, when uh when I used to go train at Fort Irwin, and you know where Fort Irwin's at, it's in the fucking middle of the desert. Yeah, there'd be like fucking coyotes all over, passing by. There was one that was following me. And I'm like, look, man, I know I'm fucking chunky, but I'm not fucking lunch, all right? Just <laughs> leave me the fuck alone. See, man. Mario, have you done any reloading in a while? Oh yes, I've been. I've just been doing like some 45 ACP. Um. Cause I got a, 
you guys saw my 1911. I actually got another one. I got to do a video of it. Um, so I've always loved 1911s for some reason. The, the, the way they fit in my hand, it's just, it, it just feels right, man. You know what I'm saying? It, you, there's something about a 1911. You like and, uh, 1911s, huh, Mario? I love all of them. I love all the guns, bro. I'm not biased to one. I'm not a, uh, I have them all. I have SIGs, I have Glocks, I have fucking CZs, <laughs> I have, I have, uh, yeah, I have a little bit of everything, man. I, I am not biased to one. In particular, but uh, yeah, you ever shot a Tokarev? Is... I uh, no, I do not have one of Tokarevs yet. Um, I have a Tokarev shotgun, yeah. <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> pup. It's only about this long, man. Oh, wow, that thing is nice. Yeah, that's no, cool, bro. No, but a Tokarev is like the closest thing to a 1911 world. <laughs> mm, yeah, so, yeah, no, I, I don't, um, I don't have one of those, but they, they look pretty interesting. Here, here's a little insight about Tokarev. So they were a staple in the Soviet Union for many decades. And when the Soviet Union collapsed, they wanted uh, the Russian government wanted to shut down Tokarev. And Tokarev said, screw that, I've moved to Turkey. So now they're still Tokarevs, but they're coming out of Turkey. Oh. That's where my shotgun come from, Tokarev. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, the Turkish makes a lot of good. They make good guns, man. Yeah. yeah. I they they make some real cheap ones. They make some real nice ones. Well, they make a little bit of everything, man. Nothing wrong with that. Nine dollars. We make we make cheap shit too. I mean, look at the high point. I got one of them. I'm giving it to my daughter. Oh, I got one too, but. I probably fucking kill somebody throwing that shit at them instead of shooting that motherfucker. Well, this is what is it? The nine nine five, the rifle. Mm, the carbine, yeah. Uh, it's in forty five ACP. Yeah. And right after I got it, I took it to the range, and I had some issues. It wouldn't feed right, wouldn't extract right. Mm. Tore it apart, and there's a burr in the in the chamber. I call oh. it Tuesday. I'm going to go and. Make sure it works right before I give it to my daughter for Christmas. Oh yeah, that's it's cool, man. Buddy girl, pink. <laughs> so, uh, oh, it, it's Oprah, huh? It's made in Turkey now, huh? Yep. Uh, shit, what was I was looking at? It was based in Turkey. Um, it wasn't a firearm. The Canic. It was a article Canic? I was looking at. Their Canic is made in in Turkey right now. Oh yeah, now I remember. Um, with this whole uh, Israel situation, um, you won't believe this, but uh, there was this P uh, PM that was in Turkish, uh, like Congress or wherever they have over there, and his word saying was like, "Well, Israel's going to fall under Allah." And sure enough, after he made that statement, the guy had a heart attack and died in the middle of the whole court. Hmm. AR is here. Um, uh, Mario, what's your other 1911? Is it also a 45? Uh, yeah, it is. It is. It's yeah. a CMP special, man. Uh, unfortunately, my Kimber uh, 1911 is going to get lost in the ocean. <sighs> Kimber makes good stuff, man. My Kimber K6S is going to get lost in the ocean. Dog on it. My oh, I'm just saying, man, you know. My little Ruger EC9S is going to get lost in the ocean. Probably my Tokarev shotgun, too, if I can figure out how to get it broke apart in two pieces. Mm. <laughs> hey, I, can, I can just see you. Hey, you know, if I randomly get, like, 1911 parts from the Philippines, I know who they are. <laughs> well, you know, I can ship stuff FedEx, you know. Yeah, I, I had uh, I asked for them to uh, give us pricing to see what the locals pay for the same 1911s. You know, I think they pay like 300 bucks, bro. Just yeah. for curiosity's sake, my, no, they, they do, they make some really nice fucking 1911s. I'm gonna ask any questions, I'm not gonna broadcast it. But. Uh, no, you shouldn't actually. <laughs> you need to stop talking about that. We're live, yeah. That, like I said, they're very, they're very, uh. Friendly to firearms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. And I think especially nowadays with all the uh, issues that they've had with terrorism, like people are, 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 you know, even more conscious about arming themselves. And 
You mean the uh, the whole Jewish populace? What Jewish populace were? In- okay. They're harming themselves now. What? He's he's, he's talking about the Philippines. Oh. Yeah. I'm surprised the Philippine people put up with that crap because they're usually, uh, you know. Well, their 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 president is really adamant about it. I mean, the, they they have captured some of the the people that have done these crimes. And their former their former president Duterte came from Mindanao, and that was one of his big things when he was when he was the governor of Mindanao, is he was uh, on the hunt for the terrorists. There's a big army presence on Mindanao right now. They're hunting. Uh, Marcos, who's in there now, uh, uh, Bong Bong Marcos. It's it's uh, the Marcos's kid. Um, he's the president now, and uh, he is more concentrating on infrastructure and not rounding up terrorists. So. I don't know. I mean, everybody has their own agenda, but the army is all over Mindanao. <clears throat> and I think the Philippine people believe that as long as it stays on Mindanao and it doesn't come up into Visayas and Luzon, then they're fine with it. <laughs> hmm. I mean, with that Chinese presence and everything else going on, I mean, you think um, the Philippines are kind of arming themselves up to the teeth closely? Bro, there's a Chinese presence everywhere, bro. Uh, I don't know if you hear sooner or later, but um, they're, the Chinese Coast Guard or Navy was literally spraying water in their boat. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. been- I mean, they're literally antagonizing the Philippines. And one of the one of the largest trading partners with the Philippines is China, so. In fact, my uh, father, well, I was going to say father-in-law, but I'll just call him father-in-law. He's a hybrid van. It's called a Geely. Geely. And it was about the cheapest hybrid that you could find. So I said, yeah, it's cheap, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Papa's Place. That is a... Uh... Now, does Philippines have any allies like uh, Japan or even South Korea? Yeah. Uh, Korea, uh, Singapore, um, Japan. Yeah, I mean, all of them are allies within Southeast Asia. Even Vietnam has become uh, pretty closely aligned with with the Philippines in the last few years. Really? Yeah. Um, In fact... uh, you know, I mean, the U.S. is is supposedly the number one ally to the Philippines, but try and get a visa from the Philippines to the U.S. I don't know what I'm doing with that. You know, my, my fiance, she can't get here, but yet you can walk across the border, right? Mm-hmm. Well, my uh, friends are actually from the Philippines. Um, I actually tried his uh, egg rolls, man. And, oh God, man, I'd love to have those egg rolls again. <laughs> Lumpia. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I some great ones. I think Jim could uh, probably attest to that. I love lumpia. Yep. My my stepbrother's wife was Filipino, and she made awesome lumpia all the time. Yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of good dishes there, but you wouldn't believe how many American and Canadian fast food places are there. You know, I look forward to going to Timmy's. You know, Tim Hortons is pretty good, you know. And in fact, uh, yeah, she's already eaten there an hour and a half ago. Uh, my fiance usually stops at Tim Hortons for breakfast before she goes to church. Uh, well, you know how uh, McDonald's is different around the world. I wonder what it's like in the Philippines. You're gonna yeah. have a thing on that. It is U.S. from what I've heard, hmm. but our. Our first night, we're going to get Kentucky Fried Chicken for our first meal when I get there on the 30th. KFC, man? KFC. <laughs> the craziest yeah. shit I've ever saw. I don't know, Jerry, did you see the shit at the Louisville airport when you went to Port Knox? No. Uh, as soon as you fucking walk into the Louisville airport, there's a big-ass statue of fucking Colonel Sanders. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Which terminal? 
I I don't recall, man. It was a long time ago. I think it was a Delta terminal. <laughs> yeah, because they've got five terminals now. And so it might have been Terminal 1, the oldest one. <laughs> I'm flying into from Korea. Is one. I'll, I'll look for it. Thanks for the heads hey, up. Bro, if you see that shit, you got to take a video and be like, hey, you wasn't lying, Mario. <laughs> what the I, fuck is this shit? I'm going to be vlogging all of it anyway, you know. And so if I see it, it'll definitely be on my channel. I mean, um, guys like KFC, I prefer Popeyes. Get what you can get, you know. Yeah, bro. We don't. We, we, we got we got a little something better than that here, bro. That's a good thing about living around brown people. I'm not focused on cook. Well, oh yeah. He asked me, "What do you want for your first night in, in the Philippines?" Well, I won't tell you what my first choice was, but <laughs> anyway, I would too, bro. I would too. Just saying. Yeah. That. <laughs> Uh, I says, I don't know, Kentucky Fried Chicken. She says, oh, you'll love it. She says, it is so much better than the U.S. KFC. She says, it's tangier and spicier. Hmm. Okay, try it, and I'll vlog it, you know. That actually sounds good right now. Mm. Yeah, stop talking about food, guys. This, this is not good. Bro. I know. It's not good. I know. Because you're going to make me go to fucking Little Mexico over here and buy me some food and shit. Oh, don't even talk Mexican. <laughs> that's one of the things that's going to be really hard for me to find, some good Mexican food over there. But, Bro, you're in Utah. How the fuck you get good Mexican food? Oh, you everywhere. Man. Yeah? Not the that's why, Matt. Once I'd ever eaten at, what well, used to be just a few blocks away from Lakeview, and they closed it down. Oh, and okay. Oh, you got Lakeview's peoples over there. All right, cool. Yeah, just everything around here. They think bland is good. And I don't let like. Me it. Ask, let me ask. Hey, Lakeview. Hey, chime in, bro. You guys got good Mexican food over there? Where you're at. Let me know, man. Now, um, anybody a seafood fan? Dude, shut up about food, man. God. I know. I haven't had dinner. Yeah. On an island. But I keep telling I keep telling my in laws I'm not eating dried fish. Sorry. Uh, what about crab or lobster? Yeah, they got all of that stuff over there. Yeah, fresh is okay, but dried fish, no. Hey, hey, Thorzax. <clears throat> so, are you uh, you retired from the Navy now, bro? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, over forty years. He did, he showed earlier a plaque with a summary. I saw that. That was really really cool, man. I'm so I'm so glad that they uh, they got you something nice, man. So, nice, man. Yeah, and um, the fact yeah, that you man. worked on those type of those you know those type of type of equipment, it's a, it's amazing. Man. So, so thanks yeah. for doing that. Those actually dedicated you know, most of my life working on those. No, I know, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. Trust me. Uh, that silent service, man. I'm telling you, that yeah. saved, saved a lot of lives, and people don't know and think about it. Well, you know, the thing is, so everybody, well, a lot of people, uh, you know, well, just even tonight's chat, you know, we're talking about China. China has built up their submarine force, you know, tremendously. They actually stole the, uh, you know, they've copied the hull design of the Virginia class. You know, all the way down to the stern planes and everything, and that uh, you know, it's hard telling them apart the Chinese one, but you see now the Chinese are making the same mistake that the Russians did, and they're just building submarines and they're they're building them as fast as they can to put them out to sea. And the thing is, though, is in twenty or twenty five years, all the submarines are going to be you know their whole life is not going to be any you know it's going to be expired, and they're going to be like the the Russians. They're just going to just start piling them up over there. And they're going to have all these reactor plants and stuff that they built. That they never planned on taking apart, you know. And yeah, that's one thing that the because, uh, United States, you know, what we did, what we did after uh, we built the Enterprise and the Long Beach, is that we decided that hey, we're going to have to sh shut these things down someday. We're going to have to have a safe way of dealing with the reactor compartments and stuff like that. So they designed 
nuclear navy to have that built into it so that when we decommission the boat and it goes to the scrapyard, we can actually safely take care of this. That's something that the Russians didn't do, and that's something that the Chinese aren't doing right now. So it's going to be a huge problem in the future. Same thing with Russia. Russia has a huge problem. It's a community thing right now throughout the world to help the Russians out to dismantle the Navy. Pretty yeah, sad. it's messed up. Um, and um, the uh, the other it thing is. I noticed... And, and the worst part about it is that the, the worst part about it is that what people don't understand is that, you see, now China has a national debt just like any other country. And the only way that they're going to be able to manage that debt, manage that debt is to expand. Just the same way that the British did back in the 1700s. Uh, they spread out that national debt to other countries that they that they got in there and destroyed their monetary, you know, things and I, you know their monetary systems. Yeah. I so we're, we're we're we got to keep an eye on China. Yeah, you, no, I I I've noticed that. I actually saw a documentary about that whole situation, um, especially how they're affecting Australia mm -hmm. and New Zealand. Because they are being threatened by all this stuff that's going on with them, and how they're actually thinking about buying uh, Virginia class subs from the U.S. I don't know if that's even going to happen, but uh, yeah, no, it's a it's pretty interesting and crazy how they do things, and you know, a, a fine example what you just talked about is is what we're seeing right now with Russia. Uh, the tanks that they made, they, they made so many tanks, but if you notice, their quality is just as crappy as hell. They, they, they pretty much got destroyed by, by, by the Ukrainians, and now they're to a point, now that they're using 1960s technology, they're bringing a bunch of T-62 tanks and, and T, uh, T-60, uh, T-55s, you know, like all all the... Uh, old equipment. Uh, they're even noticing uh, some of the Russian uh, soldiers with Mosin Nagants, bro. You know, that's well, not crazy. They're, they're, they're using a lot of World War II equipment and firearms. Those go back to World War II. You're right. You're right. And Mozzie, yeah, I'm going to tell you what, I wish I, I wish I would have snapshotted it, but there was a, like a, a T-55 that had logs and shit, you know, like you know, strapped to the sides of it as reactionary armor. <laughs> That's how desperate they're getting. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to do this old school. Cut down those trees, strap them to the rig, and we're, we're taking off. We're going to fight a war. Well, they think it'll defeat those FPV drones that come zooming in. The hell, the FPV drones just look for a, a chink in the armor and go for it. It's a war, man. But I'm up on the battlefield nowadays. And and you know, to be honest with you, I know that you and that, you and Jerry, Jerry and I, you know, can definitely appreciate the fact that our logistical system and our military is vast superior to any other country. And and the fact that yes. we didn't have a line of trucks just waiting because their tires blew up or their trucks are not working correctly, you know. They used to beat the crap out of us about the, doing PMCS or preventive maintenance checks all the time on our on our equipment, making sure that we had all the all the uh, stuff that we needed for them. Um, and I could see why. I could see why that stuff pays dividends, you know, especially as you start seeing um, these wars, um, especially when uh, you start seeing the stuff that russia's doing i'm i'm really surprised at how inferior they really are you know i think sometimes we took we gave them a little bit of uh, you know of credit on on how good they are as an army yeah they're a good army but we noticed that there there's a breakdown in their chain oh they're tough there's a, breakdown, there's a breakdown in their logistical aspects of it you know and they their tacticals their, their tactical ways of doing things is it's just dumb like when you see tanks rolling on the on the road, that is the stupidest shit in the world. We never, we never use the roads. Never, ever, ever. We always use open country. 
we never go inside the, the fact that I see these guys getting ambushed on roads is to me is mind boggling. Look back in your early career when we were taught to fight the Soviets, taught how to defeat them, taught their tactics and things. Now we're seeing all that unfold, but only even worse than what we were taught. You know, I mean, if we had known they were that weak back then, we could have just ma marched right into Moscow from, from Germany, you know. Hey, man, Patton was right. So I can say. The Soviets yeah. weren't even Answer me anymore. this. Answer me this. Answer me this. Okay, Mario, Jerry, you answer me this. Who is the country that takes the war to their shoulder, uh, to, to their shores? Who? It's us. us. We do that. We'll go to your country and we will kick your ass. We do that. They don't. There is no plan for them to go to another country, to their shores, to attack them. But we've got that. We have that capability. We will do that. Yep. We've done that, That's man. We took, we, took, we took control of Iraq when the Army and the Marine Corps went through. They got, they got control of a country that's larger than California within four days. They were done with it. Control. Complete control. For the whole country. Sodom himself came out and said it flat out. He says, I don't know what happened to two tank divisions, but we're kicking their ass. They were wiped out. Now, I, I want to ask you this, uh, Thor. Yeah, I mean, they were wiped out in the first, the first six hours of the uh, of, of of the war going into Iraq. They were wiped out. Two tank divisions gone. Yep. And then he got up there and said, "Well, I don't know where they're at, but we're kicking their butt." <laughs> huh? Yep. Now, um, what concerns me is China. Like we're talking back on the subject of China. What's theoretically what could actually happen is uh, what if actually Putin was actually going to ask Xi Jinping's help uh, to take over Ukraine? I'm sorry, were you asking me or were you asking somebody in general? I was asking Thor, like theoretically, is it possible that Putin could actually be asking Xi Jinping for assistance to take over Ukraine? I don't think P. I don't think G. Uh, I don't think no. uh, G would do that. No. He he knows that he. His hey, the Russian army. They're running around catching chickens. They're running around catching chickens so they could have something to eat. The Russian army is doing that right now. That's how lousy their logistic system is. And well, to yeah. try to ask for assistance at this point, they're so disorganized. They can't even organize their disorganization. They're, they're chasing chickens. When you got soldiers on the ground chasing chickens so they can have something to eat, you got a problem. <laughs> you got a big problem. You mean they're doing it because they're hungry? What Warsaw is asking is, do you think that Putin has asked Xi Jinping, uh, Xi Jinping, to uh, assist him in, in the war effort? And I, I'm saying no because Xi knows that if he steps in, all of his trading partners will pull out and his whole economy will collapse. You know, like I said, they're a hybrid communist country. You know, they're, they're a capitalist communist country and their whole economy is based on exports. Yep. If, if, if China stepped in to help Russia on this overtly, I mean, they're doing it subvertly, but if they did it overtly, then what you're going to have is all, all these other countries are just going to pull right out of China and the, the whole thing will collapse. It'll implode. And he knows that we know it. Yep. Uh, no, not China, but North Korea. I know what I'm trying to say is that you got, you, you, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that China knows, China knows what Russia is up against and they are not going to get involved. They are <laughs> not going to get involved on that. They are, they, they're going to, they wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole right now. They'll watch Russia play this out. They're going to let this whole thing play this out. That's what China is going to do. They're just going to sit back and watch. Now, North they're not Korea going to get involved. They're not going to. They're not going to do that politically, politically, logistically, and also because what I said earlier, they can't afford it right now. The Chinese right. cannot afford it. Their economy is teetering anyway. 
No, but North Korea, like you were saying, Jerry, they, I think they are giving aid to the Russians, though. But they don't have enough supplies to do anything. They don't have enough manpower. Mm -hmm. They can make a little bump, but that's about as far North as... North Korea's got 1950s fucking equipment, man. They can't do shit. The only thing that. that they got... The only thing that they got is these long fucking distance missiles or rockets, whatever the fuck they got. That's that's <laughs> all they got. They ain't got shit. But they what they do have is that they have a fucking two and a half million dollar uh, two and a half million man army with the rifles. And sometimes that is, is enough for people to be worried about. Because a man with a rifle can do a lot more than you might think, man. And we've yep. seen it in, in history plenty of times. Um so and that's that's really the only two things that that North Korea has. It, it has no logistical fucking uh, cap capability because even their fucking people are hung are dying of hunger. So yeah, yeah. But you know, I only I think the only ones that would be threatened by that two and a half million man army would be South Korea. I don't think I don't think North Korea would have the logistics, like you said, to get their people to Russia. To help infuse into uh, into uh, uh, Ukraine. Yep, and um, also the the what was it the Chechens are they're dwindled out to nothing now. Yep, and there's a lot there's a lot of infighting going on in Chechnya, Chechnya right now. Asking why are our men dying for for somebody else's war? That's happening in Georgia too. <clears throat> It's gonna all it's gonna all implode in just a little while. Everybody got silent. Yeah, but Thor's man, it was uh, it's really cool that uh, you know what you did for the country, man. People kind of don't stop to think about you know what we have in our navy and how powerful our navy is. You know, so appreciate all you've done for us, brother. That's good stuff, man. And I hope you enjoy your your time off now and get to focus on, on yourself and, you know, take care of yourself, man. Yeah, it's nice to be on my own time table, man. Do you, you know, plan on doing anything else now? I mean, I don't have to. I mean, I see the cars in the neighborhood leaving in the morning and all these people going you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I think about that, you know, I'm out of the rat race now. It's just nice. You know, I, I watch trucks going up folks, fools. I don't have to do that anymore. I'm especially, still especially in the winter time, Jerry. What's that? Especially in the winter time. I don't go to Wyoming anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm still waiting for my turn to sit on my front porch in my rocking chair. No. You know, I I yeah. kind of did that for a little bit because as you guys know I'm semi-retired already because I already retired from the military. Uh, but uh, it gets old for me. I gotta do something. <laughs> you know. Well, that's so. because the guys aren't mowing your lawn, so you can't give them crap. That's true, bro. You know, I don't, I don't give them the special instructions I always did. <coughs> but the, the lawn does look good, though. Yeah, you don't have any well, let, me tell you let me tell you something that I've noticed about... Let me tell you something that I've noticed about career military people. Career military people, when they retire, they have a real hard time at it because everything that you do when you're in the military is structured and you your mind starts thinking that way and when those guys get out of the service they they, they they're so used to living in a structured lifestyle that That's it's very right. hard for them to retire it's very hard for military people to retire yep. it's extremely hard and and what's really bad is that when you got four military people that come back to work for the government okay and then they think that's an extension of their career and it is a huge deprogramming to try to turn them back into civilians. You're, you're not in the military anymore. You're not wearing collar devices anymore. Come on, dude. Yep. You know, and it's it, 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 it's hard. It is. It's hard. I worked with those guys. I felt sorry for them. You know, I did. And they had to be told by our command, 
they'll, they'll, you know, they'll try to push things up the chain of command and they'll turn around and say, well, wait a minute, you're, you're not even in the military anymore. You're a civilian, you know, and these guys are, well, you, you, we can't, we can't help you that way anymore. Yeah, it's tough. So I feel yeah, for you believe guys, me, man, I, I do. Yeah, I've seen I know. It. I yeah, believe me, I, I have a hard time every day, bro. And I I just try to take it day by day. That's all I could tell you. But um Yep. Yeah, yep. that's all I could do. Yep, and we're also here for our you, Mario. Just want you to know that. No, I appreciate it, bro. No, I appreciate it. It's just uh it's it's hard, you know, like what Thor's saying, you know, we're I, I think of us the same way as people that, that have done like a, like a lifelong sentence in jail, you know, we become what they call institutionalized. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yes. And uh yes. And, and uh, we we are we are used to certain structures, certain ways of doing things and and uh when it's not there anymore, it's when it's uh it's hard you start it. you start questioning uh, what your what your motives are, what yep. your what your mission is? Because I mean, yep. when I got out of the military, man, you know, like before I got out of the military, like I had a I had a purpose, you know, like I was in charge, I was responsible for a lot of stuff, responsible for personnel and and equipment and all this other stuff, you know. And then when you get out, you know, it's like not the same. You don't have that same type of purpose or drive. You don't have the same mm -hmm. goals. Um, and you know, you think people think differently too, you know what I mean? Civilians are more about them. They're not about the, the organization itself. They're more about their goals or their desires or whatever the case may be. And it's not a bad thing, but when you come from a, from a, from a, uh, a place where everything is all about team and, and, and soldier care and all this other stuff, you know, and, and when you don't have that same mentality or drive with the people you work with, it's really hard. And it gets to a point where you're, um, you get pissed off and you get upset um, and, um, you know, you have a tendency of uh, really having a hard time understanding people. Taking on like, dynasties. Yeah, yeah, picking on dynasties, another period. In other words, you know, I hate this organization, so I'm going to go after it now. I hate I hate what they're doing over there in code, whatever, so I'm just going to go after those guys. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I've seen that. I've seen it. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're, starting to, we're starting an inner code war here. We're not going to do that, dude. <laughs> whoa. That was one of the yeah. things I... Also, yeah, <laughs> and 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 honestly, I I think I think you know, uh, what, what, I think. Go ahead, Doug. When it, when I would sit down with a young man that was having a problem, and uh, you know, uh, or we were having a problem with him, uh, I'd always tell him flat out. I'd say, I want you to understand something. Quality in the job is what we do. Quality in the people is what we build. That's our mission here is build quality people. And if you're not a quality person, we're going to find that out. Yep. And you better start looking for a job. Yep. Yeah. And um, listen, I'm not a vet, but um, I'll tell you this much as a civilian. I, um, I'm just absolutely disgusted the world has become as far as me being in my own generation. The generation after me is absolute shit. You got men that are absolute pussies and they want a safe space. You got people that can't identify them being male or female. I mean, this is a fucked up generation I'm dealing with. And it's, um, you know, the thing about it is I worry about that because, I mean, what happens if we do have to get in a war? We're going to get a bunch of old, salty, crusty fucks like me go out there and go to war? <laughs> Because the rest of these motherfuckers don't want to step up, you know. It's like, because technically, even though you're retired, you know, you can still be called back to active duty. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, and well, you know, so that's why I'm like, holy shit, you know, I better not like gain so much fucking weight or you know this and that or stay in somewhat shape just in case some shit does happen and I need to get called back because, you know, 
that's that's how that's how my mentality is you know i yeah. i don't see a lot of this new generation stepping up and and doing what needs to be done they yeah. love to they, they love to um uh, I, i've noticed that the new generation loves the the uh, instant access to everything the uh being i feel like they're in many cases very privileged because they feel like everything should be autonomous when it's most cases you know when we grew up it wasn't uh, on ai on everything oh fuck ai dude i'm being honest with you. this is just the start of uh, <laughs> of, of oh. some crazy ass shit, man it's like I, I do not trust a fucking computer computer telling me what i need to do or how to do it or shit like that mm-hmm. hey i want it's even a car that can self-drive man yeah now it it, it does scare me because uh, the new generation is so dependent on technology. Yep. I can tell you that if for some reason this new generation would end up having to serve and they tell them, hey, here's a compass and a map. I want you to read this map. I want you to go from point A to point B. That motherfucker would be lost, bro. Oh, definitely. And they're, the only thing they can get at average is it's cool. They're like, That's where's my Garmin? How about this? Son, start this. How about this? Son, start this lawnmower. Start with that. See if they can do that. Oh, oh yeah, you're asking a lot, bro. <laughs> Jim, like, honestly, you know what you, he's talking you guys, about? You know what he's talking about? He's talking about what the Navy just had to do. They had to take all the cell phones away from guys that were going into basic training. They told, you know, yeah, they were taking their cell phones in there. They said, whoa, whoa. Where is your mom and your daddy ain't going to be here? Anybody. You're on your own, pal. Where are you? Bro, I'm going to be honest with you. Me and Jerry could tell you this shit. When we went to basic training, we got one fucking day to call home. One fucking day. And it's 30 fucking minutes. You know what I'm saying? You got a fucking pay phone outside of the fucking... Uh, out of the barracks, and you better fucking be dialing. And and the drill sergeant be like, "Hey, let's go, get the fuck out." You know. Yep. And, yep. And I don't. I don't understand That's why much. taking your cell phone is it's a big deal. Fuck that shit. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Thor and Thor Mario. My generation. I grew up in the the early nineties. We didn't have cell phones like we did today, man. I mean, back then you either had like the money to get a cell phone back then, or you didn't. Man, you had those big book fucking phones yeah, exactly. back in the day, remember that shit? <laughs> I mean, back in the old days, like, hey, uh, look at America back in Second World War and Vietnam, Korea. That was times where our generation was built like fucking men. And I'm not talking like the, what we're seeing now. We're talking men. Strong beef, bucked up men that would take on anything. And, and honestly, this is the way I look at it. I, I say within the next 10 fucking years, we're going to have another terrorist attack in the United States. And we're going to see who the fuck steps up and who doesn't. Man. That's just the way I look at it. Yeah, yeah. you have a fucking open border like the way it is right now, we're going to have all kinds of fucking crazy ass motherfuckers coming in here. And before you know it, they're going to have the little group and they're going to they're going to they're going to start a fucking uh, an attack on the United States. And I worry about that shit every day, man. You know, I, I worry about that shit because it, it's it's gonna happen sooner sooner rather than later. Having an open border is a fucking disaster, man. I'm telling you, it is the worst shit this administration would ever do. And uh, we don't know who's here. Exactly, bro. And we don't know who's coming in here. I mean, I've got no problem against people immigrating to the U.S. We're all immigrants. You know, see, here, here's my thing. I don't, I don't, I, I'm an immigrant myself, but here's my thing. I, I, I stood at the back of the line and I worked my way up. Most of these motherfuckers coming in here, they don't want that. They want fucking Obama phones. They want, they, they want fucking welfare. They want to have a driver's license. They want all the shit. Yeah. They don't want to sell that. No. Me. They don't want nothing where they they work their way and and, and and got themselves where they need to. They're not earning anything. They're not. A they're not earning anything, and they're not yep. contributing to the country. They're not even paying That's taxes. 
Exactly. I so mean, that's the past. people would immigrate here. Great. Welcome aboard. That's what we are, a melting pot. But they would assimilate and they would earn a living. Yeah. You know? That's all changed in the last 40 years. But I also think that to a certain point, we have to be selective as to who we bring into the United States, man. We really Definitely. Do. Because not, not everybody has has that, uh, uh, you know, not, not everybody has the intentions that, that we're looking for. What's um, up, Thor? Problem is, uh, is that those people come here and they want their cell phones, they want their social security checks, they want the government assistance and everything like that. But what they don't understand with that attitude, they are turning our country into the same shithole that they left. Like Venezuela? They're bringing there to here and expect here to be there. They're wondering why here became there. You know, and it's the funny thing now, um, like in places like Chicago and other places in the United States, um, a lot of the people living in Chicago don't even want them now. They're like saying, get the hell out. We don't want you here. They're taking no, the craziest spaces. thing is when you see people from New York, bro. People from Long Island and all them fucking places because they brought a bunch of uh, immigrants over there to their area. Dude, they were fucking having a fit. I was watching that shit because I get feeds from like New York uh, news and stuff. And yep. I was laughing my ass off because I'm like thinking, well, you guys didn't have a problem coming in, but now that they're in your neighborhood, you have a problem with that shit. And I know uh, a couple of years ago, oh, come on, let them in, you know, because. It wasn't affecting them until mm -hmm. they got bus loads. Exactly. No. When you start seeing motherfuckers in, uh, at, the, at the Martha's Vineyard and, and all these other fucking places, oh, they're a problem now. You know what I'm saying? You know, the crazy thing is with these migrants is um, they think that they are doing jobs bullshit. Most of the time they're actually doing stuff they shouldn't be like prostitution, um, trying to get welfare or whatever you theme up down the book. Well, a lot of them are going to get into organized crime because that's the easiest way for them to get into whatever they want to get themselves into. And so that's what they're going to be after. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be getting that that uh, the drugs and and whatever. Yep, shit exactly. They're, but yeah. they're making they're making deals with the cartels to get in here. You know, the cartels are the ones. Yes. In the mix. So that's a good point you brought up. Uh, when you have uh, when you have migrants that have these color fucking bands in here, right? Right. So what happens is that the cartel kidnaps these people, the people and tells them, hey, we're going to hold your mom or your daughter or your wife or whatever. But you're going to have to work for us when you get over there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And and that's exactly what they're doing. That's the reason why we have this fucking problem with fentanyl and all this other shit, because yep. you have all these fucking mules bringing all that shit in. And every one of them's coming in being a mule for the cartel. Exactly, bro. And my thing is that the, we, our country is not really stepping up. Some of the southern border states are stepping in, like Texas is stepping into it like really hard. Arizona starting to do the same. Because the thing about it is all this shit affects them, especially Arizona. I don't know if you guys know this, but Arizona for a while was the kidnapping capital of the world. Not Ain't just, the, not just the, the country, the world. Mm -hmm. And in... And, uh, and it's gotten to a point that, you know, they have to profile people because, you know, because of the stuff that's going on. And it's not really being racist. It's just, you know, my thing is that um, you have to take care of your of your people. You know, that's the whole point of uh, elected officials and law enforcement are there to do. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's an unfortunate situation politicians have gotten us into it but you don't think the politicians are having to deal with it right No, they let the people handle it yeah yeah, yeah. and and my thing is that the the, the people like in the uh, other border patrol you know the homeland security these people have been like fucking screaming for help for fucking years and nobody's listening to them <clears throat> well and then they're told catch and release you know so what's the sense of even catching if they're releasing immediately, you know, that, oh, we don't have enough holding cells. My thing is get a fleet of fucking, uh, 
a fleet of fucking jets and just start deporting motherfuckers. That's just the way to do it, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. They didn't have a problem with Obama was doing that. Obama was uh, one of the presidents that deported people the most. You, people don't know that shit. I mean, you know? and then I tried to say that Trump was the one putting them in cages. When you go back and look at the timestamp, that was during Obama. It, yeah, exactly. And yep. I know, man. It, it's just, it sucks. It does suck. And, and I'm glad that Ashley knows exactly what I'm talking about because uh, she happens to live in Arizona. So um, it's, it's an unfortunate thing what's going on in Arizona, too. With, uh, it's really sad. Really sad turn of events. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'm too worried about the Philippines. Uh, no, man. But, um, you know, honestly, the only thing that's the reason why I really never really want to move to another country, man, is just that to a certain point, yeah, you're in the Philippines or whatever, but we're just a walking ransom, bro. I mean, honestly, you, you got you got to be careful with that shit, man. In the Philippines? Hell yeah, you're a walking ransom, bro. I mean, you're an American shit. You're a it's man, Asia, like dude. It's Asia. Don't yeah, get. I just, I just, I would be very careful, bro. Just, just don't go into the bad areas. My thing is that it just takes one time, man. It just takes one time, bro. And so I would tell you, man, like be very careful, man. Is uh, like I even tell that shit to my friends that love to live in in Mexico and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, come on, man. you're just like a walking ransom, bro. That, that's another thing, Mario. Like my friend, who's he's American, but he's actually Mexican descent. He's like telling me, "Bro, you gotta go to Mexico." I'm like, "I am not stepping foot in that fucking country, dude." Out of no disrespect, but I'm a fucking walking dead person to be going there. Are bad. You go down central part of Mexico. It's great. People are great people, and it's not a, not the crime like it is up in the northern parts, of the border. <laughs> that's where the cartels are. are well, huh? I would tell you, you know, there's still the, the tourist places are still I would consider safe, well, except Acapulco, and I say probably Acapulco is probably the worst. But um, for the most part, most of the tourist places in Mexico are pretty decent, you know, because it doesn't. Uh, even the locals try to push people that are kind of extreme towards uh, Americans because they know that you know that's how they make their livelihood. Yep. You know, so to them, it's like it's it. It, you know, they don't want anything that's going to drive, you know, um, people out of that. Uh, well, my uh, daughter, that, uh, Playa de Carmen, uh, at least once every year, you know, for vacation. And she says they've got their own security force and they're walking around armed and everything else, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Even even when I go to to Guatemala, like um, my uncle is a, is a lawyer. He's a pretty successful lawyer. And he lives in a uh, residential area that's got on mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, that's the only reason why I would ever go there because at least I have that, you know. But, yeah. Um, is it safe to go to Cuba? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, some people have gone there. I know my wife's been wanting to go because she loves Cuban food, but I'm like, fuck that. I don't know if I want to go there. <laughs> I know the Dominican Republic you do not want to go to, Ab. What? Dominican Republic? Yeah, it's one country you do not want to be in. Well, yeah. my brother goes there a lot. I was going to say, there's several expats that I talk to. They're not only that, my cousin lives there, so I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about Dominican Republic. Um side of that or some other one I'm thinking of. Well, the Dominican Republic used to be bad. Are they yeah, it used to be bad. And then they're bad cops and stuff. Well, they, they focused a lot on their on their tourism and they've improved. Not, not the Dominican Republic of Jamaica. You don't want to be in that country. Oh, in Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, well, Jamaica, Jamaica it's, it's a... Yeah, it's always been a, a bit uh, a bit out there. You can always go to Costa Rica. There's more gringos there than there are fucking Costa Ricans there. Yeah. They, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, gring, that's the gringo stopover now. That is, bro. I'm telling you. You can't hit a rock and not hit a white boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit is funny, too, bro. I was like, what the fuck? There's an actually that spends half of the year in 
the Philippines and half in Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. And he says, man, he says, it's so much more relaxed in Costa Rica. Costa Rica is very relaxing, bro. Uh, what's the other one? Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. Oh, that's that's a, that's American fucking territory, bro. I, I know. I, I've been there. It's kind of liberal, but... Mm. Kind of? Oh, that's that's the other thing. If I need if I need health care under Medicare, I gotta fly to Guam. Oh yeah, you shit out of luck, bro. I gotta fly to Guam. How far is that from where you're at? About an hour and a half flight. Uh, okay. That's not bad. No. Oh, that's right. That's right, dude. Yeah, I gotta go to Guam. You can't get Medicare yeah. services in the Philippines. Right. You can't Guam is as American territory, then you can get that done there. Man, back in the day, the uh, Philippines was a U.S. territory, man. They well, it. U.S. protectorate. Mm. And I, that's why I don't understand why it's such a bitch for anybody <laughs> in the Philippines to get a U.S. visa. You know, I get a visa. Because all them fuckers get, want to come here, bro. Shit. The Philippines extends a courtesy to Americans. You get visa on arrival. You get a 30-day visa just for touching down. But yet, you try and get to the u.s you see here's my thing bro like i was telling you they, they got to be very selective as to who comes to the country bro uh, unfortunately it's just the way it is and, and it's not just it's not it's not just our country bro i mean honestly i've gone to european countries like germany germany is very particular about who they bring into their country but you um, get a visa upon arrival for germany because we're americans yeah uh, exactly France. you can France. yeah but if you're not they're like what the oh what are you doing here? What are you doing in Germany? No. <laughs> yeah. That's his loss. Yeah, you should show him your, your military ID card. Oh, come on in. It's like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> we have your beer right here. Yeah, we got your beer right here. Can I get some... Uh, uh, what's, what's that shit that I'll I tell I you one thing. Worst. Over there in Germany, if, if they... If, if the Polish eye is alongside the road... And they're waving people over to you know pull over alongside the road. You don't pull over alongside the road, they shoot at you. They don't they don't yeah, ask questions. They don't get in their cars and shoot you. Nothing. Yeah. They shoot at you. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's they true. they don't do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. You will pull over. When I was there in eighty seven, that happened. They had a they had an accident. They had a road. They were guiding people through, and this guy panicked and gassed on it. They lit him up. They, they yeah. yeah, the police side does not fuck around, bro. Guilty. If, if they tell you to get down, <laughs> right. fuck down. They don't beat the fuck out of your ass. You don't. <laughs> and, and their dogs will bite you, too. They don't give a fuck. Uh, but I love Germany, man. Duke of Eisen is my favorite beer. Oh, Ger- German is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good times in Germany. Yeah, Germany three times. Yeah. I haven't been there for Oktoberfest, man. I gotta be there for Oktoberfest. Yeah, the last lit up. we took we took our plane ride from the from the sandbox to Frankfurt. And then we got a twenty three hour layover. Oh, you're talking <laughs> to people that haven't had any alcohol in six months. Uh yeah. You <laughs> had one and you were just tore up. You were just tore up after one. And how we got on the airplane at the end of that, I have no idea. I don't you notice, know. you notice when, whenever we go to the sandbox and we land in Germany, miraculously that that the, the plane would go down for like three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great, bro. It was awesome. Like we're, the two times we were there, well, we stopped. Uh, we stopped in uh, in the uh, Rheinstein, and. Uh, and uh i mean it was it was miraculous because the c5 is, is such a badass plane we had two m1a tanks in that motherfucker. yeah and we had a hundred fucking soldiers in that bitch how that thing got up in the air i have no fucking idea oh you had the, you well, had, when i we only had 76 seats up on the upper deck yeah on the upper deck yeah that was like 100 motherfuckers in there man and i'll tell and you then, tell you to evacuate the aircraft and you're trying to get down that spiral spiral staircase mm-hmm. You know, just jump. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, yeah, good times, man. We were in. Yeah, every time we landed at Ramstein, the motherfucking plane would go down for like three days. We're like, I'm gonna get fucked up. <laughs> I'm gonna do. After land, our plane had go- went down, and we lost uh, 
across the Atlantic, and then we stopped in Torreon, Spain. <coughs> worked on the damn thing for like four hours. So mm. we one Air Force guy down to get some Dago Red. We got ripped again. Mm -hmm. And then they says, okay, get on the airplane. We get on the airplane, you start firing the engines up. The alarms all go off to tell us to evacuate the aircraft. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it's good times, bro. Yeah. You know they made that shit up. <laughs> Out of the door. And here's all these firemen there with, with hoses. You know, oh, don't shoot me. You know? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. And another six hours while they worked on the thing. Mm. We were on what they called the Great White Hope. It's the only white C5 galaxy that the Air Force has. And they oh, call really? it the Great White Hope. And I asked oh, her, I says, why do you call it that? This is because we always hope it never comes back. No. <laughs> what the fuck? We hope it yeah. off again. The worst shit our fucking first time did, dude. We, uh, we left fucking Kuwait. And we stopped at Shannon, Ireland. Really? We stopped at Shannon, Ireland. And it was fucking great, bro. And our fucking first time was like, all right, you guys can get two two fucking drinks from the bars. You know, that's the stupidest shit you could ever do, bro. <laughs> you know, motherfuckers are coming up with bottles of Southern Comfort. Oh, God, shit. They got fucking tore up. <laughs> Emptied out. <laughs> it did. It did. Yeah, um, I'd like to go to Scotland. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> Once yeah. take the Scotsman with you, why don't you? Yeah, Scott. You know, I we did have some Scottish guys that were in the Royal Air Force. I can not understand a fucking thing they were telling me. Yeah, they think they, they, they had a Brit guy, and he was telling me like what he was saying. I was like, oh, okay, cool, man. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, I love the deep, rich accent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying. No. But uh, we were we were actually in a uh, joint unit, right? So we had like the cream of the crop, and we had the, the SBS and the SAS guys with us. And uh, so one time these motherfuckers decided they wanted to play soccer, right? And they kicked the shit out of our guys. Like they beat their ass like ten to two. And they come and tell me that shit, and I'm like, oh, fuck that shit. I went and grabbed all the fucking Mexicans, bro, all the fucking beaners, bro. And I had the, the, the big one. The, the goalie was a big white dude, so we kept his ass there. Dude, we talked Spanish the whole fucking time. We kicked the shit out of them. We beat them like fucking it was like eight nothing, bro. It was bad. They were fucking pissed. I'm like, yeah, man. See, because you didn't have us in the fucking team. That's what happened, motherfucker. You were yeah. using the Spanish code. They couldn't That's understand. Right. They couldn't understand shit. Yeah, we're like the fucking wind talkers and shit. <laughs> wind <Soccer. laughs> the moment you get beaten up by a Brett, here comes the Calvary. That's right, bro. That's, that's the great thing about America. We have motherfuckers that speak more than one language. Wind talkers. Fuck, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, now, Mario, did you ever work with the uh, Polish too? The Polish, yeah, those fuckers are nuts. Oh, did I tell you a story about the Polish? Um, we were in fucking Germany, right? And uh, uh, you know, we 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 would do like force on force fights and shit, you know, mm -hmm. with different units. We had the SAS guys with us, and we had we had this Polish uh, the Polish special forces. Uh, and, was it Grom? Yeah, and we had those motherfuckers, and we had. Um, we had the Danish guys over there and a bunch of other motherfuckers. Make a long story short, uh, they told us, okay, you guys need to go uh, force on force with the Polish guys. We're like, all right, cool, no problem. Um, so uh, we were at that time using what they call a mile system, which is basically like a pretty much like a glorified laser tag, right? Uh -huh. And it has a, and we shoot blanks, right? And when you shoot a blank, the laser, sends a, a laser out and if the other person has a harness or or um, a halo they it will go off you know it'll make a make a beeping sound beep, beep. that's close so make a long story short these motherfuckers didn't tell us that they were going to do sim rounds <laughs> and the fucking polish came in and they start shooting us with sim rounds and those motherfuckers hurt like when you have when you're 
using that type of round, you have to have like a face mask and, and have more padded uniform and shit like that. And these motherfuckers shot one of my guys almost close to the face, like right here. And it fucking like cut him really bad. Sad. And they just started beating the fuck out of the Polish guy. It's just like, where, where? It's just like, it, it was no holds bars, bro. It was like 20 motherfuckers going against 20 motherfuckers. It was great. Run at it for a good 10 minutes, man. And uh, yeah, but then after that, we, we got a beer and we were good to go. But yeah, we told him, don't ever fucking come in with sim rounds. We'll you, <laughs> you know, I was part of the team that helped develop the Miles system. God damn, you're that old? Yeah, 76. <laughs> Fuck, bro. Oh, yeah. We had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, fuck that shit. I mean, I had to, I was part of the team that, that, uh, 77, actually. set up the, uh, the M1A2 when they started coming up with the new shit on the M1. And that thing sucked because you were in the fucking field all the time, man. Yeah, see. Last time I played with an M1, it was still an A1. Oh, God. No, had 834 to play with. What, well, you had a 105? No, no, it was a 120. Oh, okay. The A1 was 120. The M1 was a, a 105. Yeah. It was upgraded to 120. Yeah. They, they upgraded those things quick as fuck, too. But um, that's what we had in Desert Storm, man, was the A1. Oh, What's man. that? What's the Chinese version that the Chinese made of the Abrams? It was like a clone variant or something? Shit. That's what it's called. Yeah, it's shit. But I'm trying to <laughs> it's shit. It's going to fall apart. Yeah, it's probably going to fall apart. Here's my thing, dude. Our fucking tank is built. It's, it's almost 50 years old, that motherfucker. It is by far the most combat-proven fucking platform in the world. It is an awesome platform. The more you know about it, the more you got to love it. I, I've shot motherfuckers at 2,500 fucking meters with an M1A1. Go on farther, 32. Yeah, no, no, you can shoot them that far. But just stop and think about it. That thing is shit, bro. <laughs> it is. That thing, yeah, is, that thing, is, that thing is like like a big sack of shit. That looks like a wannabe Merkava. You notice that shit? <laughs> I was going to say, somebody splatter that with guacamole. No, it's just it looks like a wannabe uh Israeli fucking uh tank. It's like a type ninety nine. Yeah, I wouldn't trust that shit at all, dude. It's a piece of shit, man. It is look a at piece the paint of shit. job that thing. <laughs> yeah, them motherfuckers don't even know how to paint that shit, man. <laughs> I, bet you, now, I, bet you, I, I can tell you, man, you know, I, I was in tanks for ten years <laughs> and then after that I became mechanized infantry. And did the Bradley and then the did the striker and um, I I could tell you that the M1 is definitely my my favorite platform. It was the most funnest fucking thing you shoot. The thing about the M1 and Jerry could tell you this is that the faster you go, the more accurate you can shoot. Yeah, because the collimator and on all the other systems are working. Yeah, I mean you can sit still and shoot. But if you're on the if you're on the move, shoot and scoot, shit, man, you can't miss. No, you can't miss. I mean, and, once, and that that stabilization system on the thing was fucking amazing. Once you, um, man, it just locked on. I mean, you yeah. look at that sight, and it don't matter that tank sitting there flopping around yeah, like this. It's it's steady. Yeah, it's just steady, man. You know you're on. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. You know. I wish you don't send it. Yeah, like I said, yeah. we, we were hitting targets at 32 mm. and hit 34. With a what? With a Sable? Yeah. Uh, no, with the eight, with the heat. With a fucking heat? That it, fucking far. I had a gunner that just he knew all the tricks, man. Oh, damn. But I didn't think a heat could go that fucking far. 24. Oh, explain to them what a heat round is, bro. I explosive and I tank. Yes, but it's actually a little bit heavier than what we call a sable round, which is more of a spear it's round. And the spear round, it's got, and it's got. Yeah. With those, but sable was depleted. Uranium. Yeah, it was depleted uranium, and it would just go right through. Now, one thing I can tell you guys about the sable round, it just it's a little, is it, off target. Is it, sable round, 
it doesn't do anything. It just punches right through. <laughs> punches right yeah, through. Like that heat up, you know. <laughs> that thing is so badass that it went through burns, like you know, like in Iraq. Uh, my platoon sergeant was telling me that he was a gunner at that time, and he was telling me that there was a T seventy two that was behind this big old fucking berm or whatever it was. And he said, fuck it, I'm just going to shoot right through it. <laughs> it actually went right through that motherfucker and hey, killed the fucking T-72. You just saw the fucking turret go blowing up and shit. It was with the Sabo. With the Sabo, yep. Yeah. yeah. I've heard, I heard that. I've heard about that happening. Yeah. yeah, he was in the 24th ID, bro. So he was like one of the first ones there. No, we were there for him. <laughs> where, where were you at? We were testing out the new mine plows. That nobody ever thought to oh do. no shit we're the ones we are the team that designed and built the mine plows so the only oh, way damn. To plows is to go plow up some mines fuck that you know, bro well, i do you don't lay a minefield out there without overwatch mm -hmm. the artillery wasn't very happy we're plowing up all their mines they carefully laid out there Except you. Nobody told me you're not supposed to have a gunfight with artillery either so <laughs> Good times. Good times, bro. Yep. It's here's that. Yeah, but the M1 is uh is is almost 50 years old. It is it's got you know quite a few versions over the years and stuff like that, but it is by far the most combat proven fucking tank. And it, it's hard to believe it's still the best tank on the planet. It it really is. By really far. Is. By far. Because I'm prejudiced, I see all these other tanks. I think, really? Yeah. yeah but what? What? I mean, let's let's stop and think of it. What? What the fuck has the French Leclerc ever done? I've never seen that thing in action. Um, I've never seen. I may. I think there's been some small skirmishes, but I've never seen a Leopard Two in action. Uh, the Leopard Ones are getting their asses kicked every time the Russians fart. Oh, nice. Um, I've never seen, um, they sent a lot of the leopard ones. Oh yeah. Is there, dude, those are fucking 1970 tanks though, bro. Oh, uh, like Germany sent them a bunch of tanks. Yeah. let see the, but I've never seen the leopard two in action. I've never seen it in action. I have never seen a challenger. Well, the challenger, the challenger wasn't, I've seen it in action. I know it was in, in desert storm. I was going to say, I saw the challenger in desert storm. Yeah, and they did okay. Yeah, but they used a lot of a lot of our systems when the British went when BAE built the the Challenger. They came to uh, AM General and got a lot of the got a lot of the uh, technology from them, United Technologies and stuff. I mean, there there's several systems that they got from us. Not everything, but several. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Challenger's not bad. It's not it's not the M1, but it's not bad. But you know, the I was really surprised how good the M sixty eight three did because the Marines did a good job with that fucking platform, man. That's when we had to take the mine plows from the M sixties. We had to widen them because the M one A one is. 18 inches wider than the m60 and we had to d develop hydraulic systems on the m1 ah, man hard points mount points anyway yeah that, that was that was a lot of task and then we had to get busy, busy building the damn things and retrofitting these tanks hmm. Good time. No, nobody ever designed a mine plow for the m1a1 yeah, but that thing is beautiful now, man. Uh, especially like the, there's two types of man plows. There's the one with the teeth that sink in and the fucking. Fine. Huh? It was expedient. Then they got the one with the rollers and stuff. Rollers, yeah. I didn't like the one with the rollers. I think it was too clumsy looking, man. And you actually, you were kind of slow with that shit and I didn't like it. Well, and you got to be careful with, you got to be careful with the plow because you can go too deep and you can stall that tank. Yeah, that is true. You can rip it right off. So yeah. we were developing limiting systems so it wouldn't go down too far. Mm -hmm. Much of an angle. So 
I, I mean, I was part of the team that helped design and build that, but, <laughs> and it was one of those deals. Of, okay. When, when are we going to get the mine plows? And everybody just looked at each other. What mine plows? <laughs> you know what? I got to look this up. I wonder if North Korea even has tanks. I wonder what they look like. like. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a, there's a giant <laughs> me downs. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the Polish have leopards. Right. That's a question. Actually, I was going to ask you, Mario. Are those pretty decent leopards? The the leopards are are decent, you know, because I train in in Hunsfels. I was what they call a OC or an observer controller, right? So they're not the type that you can actually sneak into the fucking to the. Uh, to the enemy because they use these big loud ass diesel fucking engines <laughs> and with an m1 you can sneak in because believe it or not that jet engine is really quiet man you can creep up and you all of a sudden you're on top of the fucking enemy and like i gotta tell you i'm not being biased but i mean i I've, I've seen it i've seen it in action the leopard tool is is good because they have the same breach system as the m1 they use the same gun they use the same two, um, but technically they're not. I think they're inferior because of that loud ass fucking diesel engine. You, you, you know, you know that 120 smoothbore was a Rhein Metall design. The the 120 came from Germany. Right. Yeah, and that's what I said. I said that that oh. uh, the the Leopard two gun system is. It's the same one as on the M1. We actually, we actually told him, "Hey, bro, hook us up." <laughs> yeah, hook us up. Hook us up. He makes so, yeah, two. I think between yeah. technologies, mm -hmm. Leopard Two came about with some of those. Yeah, but we we did perfect that smoothbore gun um, because I noticed when the M1A1 started coming in. I mean, I would I would I just hear from a lot of my guys that they were they were. You know, like a lot of my guys were master gunners and stuff like that. And they're like, dude, man, this is a game changer right here, having this 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 gun on it. And the fact is that the crews became faster with it. Yeah. Which is fucking weird. Well, I, it, I think it had a lot to do with the design of the breach. You can drop that round in there and push it at the same time a lot easier than the 105. Yeah. I, I didn't like the 105 with that fucking thing. And, and then you had the you know, move that lever thing to the side to the arm it was fucking stupid. And you know, I mean, the whole design was killer. Yeah. Um, uh, what was it? I was going to ask. Um, <laughs> I've noticed uh, the Mexican military; they don't have tanks. They they're all just personnel vehicles they have down there. Well, the Mexican army, I don't think they they're built to have a tank force because of the terrain in Mexico. I don't think it's uh, it's feasible for them. And when you have an ally like the United States, do you really want to have that many fucking tanks? <laughs> I mean, same thing with Canada. Their their tank force is very small. It, to them, is it doesn't make any sense because their neighbor is the United States. So to them, it's like, well, fuck, let them spend their money. You know? <laughs> I mean, you, you, even if you look at, like, even the Canadian Royal Air Force, they use FA-18s. They still have a Generation Three fucking fighter. They're not using. They're they're not getting an F-35 or nothing like that. They're they're using basic stuff that they need. I mean, and the fact that that you know Canada is part of NORAD, most of the time if there's some shit going on, we're just gonna send our guys up there. Yep. We're gonna send our 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 F-35s or F-22s up to Canada, and they don't have a problem with it because we're part of nor at so they don't have an issue with it i mean um you know if if canada wasn't under bad leadership right now i mean i think we we as <laughs> americans and canadians we could actually be be more unified as a whole well we are i mean i mean militarily there's never been an issue with the canadian air force because i've i trained a lot with the canadians and that they i mean we may we may have shitty fucking leaders but our militaries are very strong, and they cooperate with each other quite a bit, more than you might know. They cross all the time. Yeah, it's the same with the British. 
Same with the British and the Australians. Same thing. Yep. yep. Yeah, they cooperate with us very well. Um, you know, one of the things that we used to do is they'd have, you know, they'd have uh, exercises, you know, ship exercises and stuff like that with foreign navies. Uh, and they would they would pull into where I was at, you know, to, you know, spend a few days, uh, a little bit of poor call and that sort of thing. But the British, the, you know, the Australians, uh, you know, the, the Canadians, they, you know, they'd pull in for a poor call. And uh, one thing that was kind of cool about that, though, is that we went down there, you know, when we had another pier that they would tie up at. We would have to go ahead and hook them up with all their shore power and stuff like that so they'd have their e-divisions up there and you know we'd go ahead and do all that but there was always this uh unofficial tour of the ship afterwards if you know what i mean their their navies are a wet navy yeah so once we were all done it was like they'd lead us down the hallway and you know they'd be pointing at a crown or something like that or you know a picture of the queen or whatever and they'd be like yep god save the queen blah 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 they get over to this area and they pull back the drape you know and that was a cruise lounge and right there in the middle of the cruise lounge they have a big old stainless steel you know uh, uh kind of like a, a salad bar and underneath it would say a gift from your queen and it would just be full of beer <laughs> yeah and so it was, it was kind of cool you know going down there and hooking those guys up they hooked us up <laughs> oh yeah because i always got I carlsberg think. and newcastle when i was in fucking iraq because i had all the sas guys in there that was had provisions coming by I was like hell yeah That's what i'm talking about mm -hmm. when uh we we had a uh, french frigate come in to the port at, of uh, uh, Demam and they're one of their uh, turbines because of uh, like twin turbine uh, drive system one mm -hmm. of them acting up so a couple of went on board they fixed the turbine this turned out to be an igniter same igniters what we used on the on the Abrams and we got that they took it out for a little short tour. <laughs> they had wine on board, cheese, croissants. I mean, shit. They 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 took good care of us. You know? <laughs> that was a nice little nice little tour on their little frigate. But yeah, we're the only dry navy. We're the only dry navy. Yeah. And that's another thing too. We went down there one time and it was the British. They pulled in. They were one of their cruisers, and so we hooked them all up. We got them all set up and everything tied up at the pier. And we had this one kid. His name was Diebeck. He was a sailor. And he was about 18 years old. You know, he's new to all this. And we went over to the boat and everything like that. And sure enough, we end up at the cruise lounge. And they're inviting us to have a beer. And, and I, I remember telling Dybeck, I said, hey, man, now watch this stuff. This is an American beer, okay? This isn't like drinking beer with your friends out there, you know, at, you know, at a football game. This stuff is pretty powerful stuff. He had two. He had two of these. I think it was Labatt's. And he got fucked up. I mean, I mean, we we were practically had to carry him off the boat, put him in the van, and uh, we had to put him downstairs when we got back over to the pier because he was he was really really drunk. And I was like, oh my god, isn't that? Yeah, but yeah, that, uh, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, hey, that's why I do miss German beer, bro. I miss all that beer because. Yeah. It definitely is not five percent like it is in the United States. No, it is not. <laughs> it oh. is not. We when we go back to the pier, they'd have, have the gate guard guy come out, you know, and he's checking badges before we drive back down the causeway. And so we're, we pull over the thing. And I'd turn around, and tell everybody in the van, okay, everybody, uh, everybody, take a deep breath and hold it, and pass up your badges. So. <laughs> Like that, you know, they'd pass up the badges and show it to the guy. And the guy was like, yeah. and then we'd just drive off. And, you know, oh, yeah. Yep. You learn that sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good times, bro. I always enjoy that stuff. Yeah, good times, man. And you know what? That's a memory that that kid died back. He's never going to forget that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, those arts here. <laughs> yeah, I just told him, hey, Santa Claus. 
Oh, shit, I spelled it wrong. Fuck. Let me tell you what happened to Dybeck. I, I, he was when it, it was like six yeah, months later. Uh, okay, so he got um, uh, he got uh, loaned out to um, uh, what are they? Secondary security force, you know, the Navy guys. He got loaned out to them, and he had to do his you know week long thing or whatever it is, you know, once a month. And so, you know, we seen him down there on the pier and I said, Hey, Dybeck, what's going on? He said, I'm not much, you know, blah, blah, blah. He says, this sucks, man. I hate it. Can't wait to get back to the shop. And I was like, yeah, we miss you, man. Anyway, so he got assigned to one of the little patrol boats, right? And so he goes down on the camel, which is the little, you know, float-like thing next to the pier. And he gets on the boat and he takes off. And I'm standing there. I'm at the gangway that goes down to the camel. I run down down there and the next thing you know i'm yelling at the boat i'm and i'm saying hey and i got his he left his he, he, he left his rifle on the on on the pier i said die back come back man get your rifle dude <laughs> yeah what the fuck bro <laughs> yeah now you get crucified you leaving your fucking rifle around me yeah and i had that one one fucking guy did that dude i smoked the shit out of him for like an hour he was more than dying. Hey, it's too far away. I'll tell you what. He was with he was with he was with, with a regular base security guy and they were pissed at him. Oh, they were really pissed at him. Oh yeah. Don't know why, gee. Yeah. <laughs> I beg fucking dude. Yeah, we always have a couple of characters like that in the military. That's one thing I do like. I, I think that's one thing I miss the most. It's the fucking characters, bro. Those motherfuckers that, that, that you end up having yeah. stories about because they did some stupid ass shit. Or 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 at least it made you yeah. laugh. So I'm saying that sit around, have a couple of beers and talk about their fuck up shit. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. That was yeah. good times. Yeah. Um I got a crazy story I'd like to show you guys. So um, it's not military, but it's something similar. Um so I'm at this guy's shop, all right? He's asking me, hey, buddy, you got to come in. I want you to see this shit. And I'm like, all right. He takes me in the back room where the camera is. And I was like, all right, what do you need to show me? It took me so long to get here. Watch this shit. I'm looking at the camera footage, and this guy is literally trying to bust in the windows and doorway here. And he gives up, and he gets open his bottle, and he, he says, you see that? And I'm like, what am I seeing? I'm just seeing a guy drinking a bottle. No, look at the bottle itself. It's not alcohol. It's fucking lighter fluid. The guy's literally drinking fucking lighter fluid as a substitute or some shit. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Well, that motherfucker better not fart. <laughs> fart around a heater or something, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> fuck around end up like a like uh, that cat in fucking Christmas vacation. Yeah, but we showed the footage <laughs> of the cops and they're all laughing their asses off and like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> Uncle Jim with a zippo. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, he's funny, man. Yeah, yeah man. Guy. Being in the military, you, you, you man, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you fucking find some fucking crazy motherfuckers, bro. Like, I, I used to love fucking with the privates, bro. I used to love fucking with the privates. You know, we get these fucking privates just out of basic training. They're like, oh, you know, like, all excited and shit and showing up. First oh, no. duty station and all kinds of shit. So I used to, like, fuck with them. So I was like, all right, man, hey, check this out, man. We're gonna go. I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need your help with something. He goes, okay. Yo, what's going on? He's like, uh, we're gonna do a density test on the gun tube. All right. <laughs> He's already laughing his ass off. Right? So here's what I want you I to do, bro. Been, uh, okay. Shut, shut up. Okay. Let me let me tell the story. <laughs> so, so it's like, all right, bro. Check it out. I need you to go inside the turret, right? And I need you to open the breach. And you go, all right. Yeah. Open the breach. All right. Okay. So, and then I'll be, I'm on the other side of the, on the gun tube, and I'm like, all right, you see me? I see you. All right, cool. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to yell, boom, as loud as you can, all right? All right? You ready? You ready? He goes, all right, all right. Boom! And, and then 
people outside, dude, because you can't see them, right? Yeah, you can only see me. And I'm trying to hold my fucking straight face. And I'm like, and I'm trying to see, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm doing some sort of density test. And I'm like, I mean, do it again, do it again. Oh. <laughs> and the guys outside me, they're fucking dying laughing. They're like falling on their fucking floor laughing and shit and all kinds of shit. And then I'm like, all right, do it again, man, do it louder. And this guy's like, boom. And then all of a sudden, my sergeant major shows up. He's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And I'm like, oh, we're doing a density check. So our major is like, oh, really? Yeah, who the fuck is that? He's like, oh, private so-and-so. All right. Hey, private, do that shit again. <laughs> boom. Now we have like fucking 10 people just dying and laughing their asses off. And we had him do that shit until his fucking, he's like red and shit because he couldn't say it no more. So I would do shit like that or I would be like, hey, man, uh, I need you to, we, we need you to check for soft spots in the armor. And then they'd be like, all right. So they would get on the outside of the turret, right? And, you know, where the, the you know, the front of the turret is like the, the, the major part of the turret, like the, the you know, and then we give them a little hammer, right? And they had to tap it. And whenever they felt something that was a little bit dense, they had to put a little circle with a fucking chalk. <laughs> this motherfucker did the whole fucking tank, dude. There was like little circles everywhere. <laughs> they would do shit like that all the time, man. Just dumb fucking shit. Just to fucking piss fucking guys up. I think Fred has a question about guns. Yeah, he wanted to ask about sizing, but I don't see the question. Need the question. Who, who, who has a question? Oh, he might be coming on here. Hang on. Let me go yeah. down. I got to go down below here. There he is. Hey, Tred, how are you? Oh, shit. What's up, everybody? Fred? What's going hey, on? Hey, Jerry, man? long time no see. Yeah, long time no see, bud. All right. Me and some buddies were talking tonight at a Christmas party. Uh oh. And he's got, he's got a. 6.5 by 55 sweep. And then he's also got an 8 millimeter. But he's not sure if the 8 millimeter is a 323 bore or a 318 bore. So we got us talking about bores and grooves and lands and stuff like that. Well, if I'm, not, if, if I'm understanding it, the bore is the narrowest part, the tops of the lands. So in particular, say a 308. So the narrowest part on tops of the board, the lands is 308. And then the grooves is one two thousandths past 308, like 310. Correct? Well, hmm. yeah, you know, so yeah. if that's the case, like when you're running cast bullets, you go you're without. running over the the biggest am which is the grooves plus one thousandths or two thousandths. You go thou. So you when you run like three hundred blackout cast, you're running three tens instead of three oh eights. Or three oh nine on up. Right. Yeah. So how does a jacketed bullet engage the rifling correctly? Well, jacketed bullets are generally smaller, so then you would do lead. You right, know? but I mean, say in a 308, and that's where I'm getting confused. If 308 is the narrowest part, and you take a 308 bullet, I say that the heat from the explosion expands or heats up that copper obturates. to where it obturates into the grooves from the heat. But then other ones are saying that no, that it's smaller, so how does it grab the bullet and do the twist? Yeah, can you can you see the I do. okay? But the book says the bore is the narrowest part, the tops of the lands. Is what the Hornaday reloading book said. I thought it was the bore. You slug the bore and measure from there. And right. or inside when you slug the bore. Well, I said, from what the book said, the, the description had the, the bore 
and it had the grooves and said that the bore is in between the tops of the groove to top of the groove no. the top of the lands so the narrowest part and then the grooves is the widest part in the middle is the widest part and i'm assuming that's why it works out for 308 to do, run three tens for 300 blackout to get all the way into the grooves so that means the 308 is in the narrowest part correct well okay the easiest way to explain it is if you slug the bore and measured it you're going to get the outer diameter correct because the grid the the lands are going to be inside when you measure it okay they're going to be indents okay right and that's what you're going off of well that, that's what i'm trying to figure out is how does the jacketed bullet well jacketed di jacketed's different than lead lead you oversize you know uh like say you had a nine millimeter it's three five five right and right so if you're doing lead you're three five six three five seven depending on you know how your gun lights it and that's what i'm trying to figure out is how does the jacketed bullet grab inside and create the twist yeah if it's the if it's the narrowest part of the bore mm -hmm. instead of the widest part of the groove The lands, here's William Gainley, the lands become the grooves. They become one. No. <laughs> um, you know, I've never seen uh, footage of copper going down the barrel, so I can't tell you for sure. But I, 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 be, I, I figure I, maybe I, you might know you being old school. No, it's, not like that. No. But man, when, man, you just called you old. Oh, right. Oh, go ahead. Just called you old, man. It's messed up, bro. <laughs> but when your chick is he gonna load lead or is he just shooting copper? He's probably gonna load copper. Man, just buy another in, in fucking the, barrel, bro. God. Well he's got eight by fifty seven. And he but, he but he don't know if it's the J or the J S. So we need to slug the bore anyway. But yeah. I was the way I was telling, I was like, well, if it's the bore is the narrowest part, if you take a say a P drill bit, which is 316, I think, it should fall into the top of the gun pretty easily if the bore is a 318. It shouldn't. If it's a 323, it should be sloppy. All right, someone just came. And that's on. when we got into the whole lands versus grooves and. Where, where's Eagle Eye when you need him? God. Here, here's here's uh, here's what James is saying. The copper dig the lands dig into dig into the jacket and make grooves into the bullet. Yeah. So it it's not. So it, it must be a hair smaller than three hundred eight. Well, okay, he's, he's worried about which bore does he have. So, right, but I mean, that that's what got us to the conversation. Either way, we're going to slug it. But that's why we got to the conversation of, well, if the lands, the tops of the lands is your bore size, how do the jacketed bullets operate into it and create the twist? If there are, if say you got 308 rifle, which is a 308 bore, your bullet is a 308 bullet. How does it grab and instead of just slide straight through? Halfway it grabs. <laughs> and then that, and that's what, what I'm trying to figure out is I know on a copper jacket of bullet, you run the size idiot the, of the bore 308 for 308. And I know lead, you run oversized so that it operate operates into the grooves. But how does the jacket get its twist if it's the same size as the tops of the lands? Well, it isn't. It's still 
it's still like getting squeezed. It's not like the lead going through the total out di diameter. It's grabbing on the lands halfway through or almost all the way through. So it's just, it's just barely it's, grabbing the lands to create the twist. Didn't the German so it might be like 3075 bore instead of a 308 bore. Well, bore. if you slug the bore, you could do a thousand less off of that. See right. Well, I, I was just yeah. trying to, you know, it just that just the the, the slugging we're going to get done. That just got us into the conversation of the uh, lands and grooves and which one does what and how it all works. And mm -hmm. I was getting confused and they were getting confused and was looking at the Hornaday book and it said that the the bore is the top of the land to top of the land. And the grooves is the widest part of the barrel so that's why i was trying to figure it out i have someone trying to come on here his name's mikey runs he's in here mikey runs yeah mikey who are you show yourself even that's not going to work i know mikey runs put something in the internal chat got a slug it no crap i know that is that what he said in the in the the internal chat. Oh, private chat. Yeah, I'm dealing with Mikey runs right now. Well, I said I, I know I got to slug it. Oh, he but said. that just got to the conversation of the lands and grooves and jacket versus lid, and how does the jacket grab and get the twist from the rifling. If it's the same size. <laughs> I figure maybe you might understand all that a little better than I do. Let me, uh, Mikey runs. Who are you? Hang on. Hell, let him in. Uh, not after the thing that went, I don't know if you were here. For that <laughs> I wasn't here for the last time. Yeah, we had we had a major troll issue, and that's why I'm hesitant to letting someone in that I can't see. All I see is a logo there, and I don't know. Well, know. I said if you come up, if you come up with you guys slug it, then it's, it sounds like he's at least in the conversation. He is, but he's just could be saying what someone else just said, you know. True. So, just, to, just to get in. Now, I don't I'm think a little it. distracted and hesitant with him right now. I'm trying to... <laughs> hey, Jim, I, I need to step out. Uh, my family is trying to get in touch with me. Uh huh. And her brother's trying to get in touch. Every, everybody's trying to get in touch with me. So Okay. Anyway, I will see you next week. I'll be here. So. All right. Uh, next week is Christmas, Jerry. So get your Christmas Thank gift. Thanks for having me on here. I, I Get your Christmas hat and ready on. Even if I am tired now. <laughs> okay, Jerry. I just, I, all of you guys, I love you and everything. And, and I'll see you next week and I'll wish you all Merry Christmas then. Okay. All right. Take care, Jerry. Merry Christmas. See you, Dave. Bye. See you, Mario. Uh, yeah, Merry Christmas, Jerry. And it looks like we lost Mikey. So, okay. Mikey ran. Yeah, he yeah. ran. Yeah, Penn, I got to hop off. Uh, hey, uh, Jim, guys, I enjoy being on here, man. Just hang out and chat with you guys. All right. Take care. Yeah, everybody, have a Merry Christmas. All right, you guys, get ready for Christmas. All right. Uh, what were we talking about now? Okay. What's the more than lands and lands and boars? And... <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I'm just punching in what everyone's saying. They can match the true board diameter. But I would definitely uh, slug the bore and go off. Yeah. Of that. Yeah. We're going to slug it. I just, I just trying to figure out how the whole. Jacket of the same size as the bore gets its twist into the bullet. Yeah, well, it's it's riding on them, but it's not like squishing like the lead bullet is. Right, and that's what I was thinking. Is maybe it's just a hair, you it's know, a, a thousandth, a thousandth bigger 
than the actual bore size or the bore size is a, a thousand smaller than yeah. the jacket. Yeah. Or I thought that the heat from it might expand the copper to kind of grab better by the heat expansion. I don't think that. No, you have the uh, exposed base copper, um, and it depends on the round, you know, how hot it is and all that. But uh, the inside of the jacket, it's soft, okay? So it's going to give. You know, jacketed bullets are soft lead inside. Yeah. It just don't give as much as the copper, as the lead does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I would slug it and then go, go off the off of the slug and see how it shoots, you know. If yeah, that, that's what we're going to do. I just got to, I don't have anything that's 323 in soft lead. But I got some boy quit. I got some 444 that Georgia boy sent me that we could drill a hole and then melt it into the uh, piece of wood or whatever to make a slug to go into it. Oh, you're but I don't have nothing 323, 324, somewhere in there size wise. Well, wait a minute. You got to hey, let do just, 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 just go down to Walmart. And then look at the fishing session, and then just go ahead and get yourself some uh, those little clamp-on little fishing weights put on the on the line. They're round. He said, just take. He those said he tried play. that, and that didn't work out for him. Round sinkers. Uh, yeah, Georgia boy. Boy, Georgia boy lead is going to be hard unless he says it's soft lead. No, he he sent me some soft lead. Oh, okay, all right. For slugging my four forty four. Okay. <laughs> all right. But I was I was thinking I can melt that soft wet and drill a hole that's five sixteenths to three one two five. So, so a hair a hair over five sixteenths, drill a hole, whatever, and then take a torch and melt the lead into that, let it solidify, cut it out of there and use that as a slug. You you don't have any molds that are similar that you can just oh. Mm -mm. Punch through. What I got is 38 and 45. You're talking about drilling a hole into a piece of wood and making a slug? Because right. Yeah, okay. Right. I thought you were drilling a hole in the middle of the thing, and I'm like, no, okay. no, in, in a piece of wood and then melt yeah, the like, lead into it and yeah, like make a make slug a, that way. Yeah, like you make a 20 gauge slug or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just okay. drill the hole a little yeah. bit bigger than the bore and melt the lead into the hole and yeah. break it out of there. And when you use a drill, whatever size you think, it's going to be a little bit bigger in the wood anyway. Right. Yeah. Okay. So That would work. And then you'll know because is it, what was it, a surplus barrel? It's a 8 by 55 or 8, eight millimeter Mauser. Yeah. Okay. But in 18, I think it says 1894 to like 19 early 1900s yeah it was, was a j barrel which was a 318 yeah there's S. and then after that it was a 323 yeah gotcha and he don't know which one he's got mm -hmm. okay i got gotcha. you but like i said that just got us into the whole lands and grooves discussion mm -hmm. i said we, we were going to slug it either way but yeah. I'm just trying to understand the lands and grooves and jacketed versus lid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a Mauser that was the Oddball 8. Okay, so it was like, damn the it. 318 one? Yeah, I think so. It was, I think it was S. I don't know. There's a J and there's a JS. The JS was the second iteration. Okay. The J was the first 318 one. It's been a long time. Yeah. That's what the Hornaday book said anyway, for the eight Mausers. Uh, do you have a double up buck? Here's a uh, West Covina Dutch here. It's 32. Well, it should be 32. Uh, Fiocchi uses 31, I think. So you got to watch out. Well, you can measure it with calipers. And I said, I'm, I'm going to drill a hole and make a slug the thing in a board is, or something. 
Yeah, and sometimes buck is hard, um, so it doesn't squeeze. You know, it doesn't. I'm, I'm just gonna take that Georgia boy soft lead that he made me because he made me like four or five of them. Yeah, do the drill and a piece of wood thing, knock it out. You know. Yeah. And then. And then slug it. Or pick it out and slug it. Yeah, just like you'd make a shotgun slug and didn't have a mold. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I'm gonna do, but like I said it, that just got us into that discussion. Yeah. I'm trying to, I tried to Google it and then it said born and it it searched for boat and I like, yeah, no. three three bullets in the three eighteen bore rifles even. Mm. So that's a lot. Yeah, it depends on what the hell that bullet it was. <laughs> I don't know. I mean that that's. Five thousandths difference. Yeah, and in some of them could be more than that. And that's not low pressure either. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. No. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would want to do that. So no. But he's he's just trying to figure out which one he's got. But like I said it it just brought the discussion up about boards and lands and grooves and. I need to do more research on how all that works. Yeah, hopefully he's got an easier bullet to buy if he's yeah. not casting. Well, he's a reloader too, so. Oh. He's been reloading since the early 90s. Okay. So, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go over there tomorrow. I picked up a bunch of lead from a guy, well... It was an old car shop. The guy used to reload. And so people bought it and making a motorcycle shop out of it. Mm -hmm. So I got all the brass and everything that was in there from them. Mm -hmm. And there's some still some loaded rounds, 357s, 9 millimeters, 45 ACPs, stuff like that. I mean, it ain't a small handful, small little jar, about yay big. Mm. But some of the brass in the boxes of the spent brass, the primers were so flat. He hadn't been running hot loads. Yeah. Found one primer with a hole in it. I was like, I don't trust his loads at all. No. So we're going to decommission the 357 mags because it's nickel brass, but it's already primed. Disassemble it. Yeah. Junk the powder put new powder in with our load and mm -hmm. put them back together. Yeah. So we're going to do that probably tomorrow. He's, he's got my bullet puller, a press type Hornady bullet puller, mm -hmm. cam actuated. And we've got, I think we've got about all the collets. So we're going to ride over there and use that collet puller and pull all those bullets out. Okay. Is it, it's a jacketed bullet. No, it's a lead bullet. They I might, might not be able to save the bullet. They might slip off the collet. Yeah. So I said, I'm, I'm going to try it, but I might, I might have to hammer them. Lead's pretty slippery with collets. Um, but you can just grab it with the wire cutters, you know, do that trick. Or I might be able to use the, just use the hammer on them. It ain't but like eight or 10 of them. Yeah, just use the hammer. But I've got like 50 jacket and nine millimeters that need to get pulled. That you don't know. Yeah. Well, a lot of them have heavily dented primers, but the bullet's still in it. Oh. E. There's at least 50 of them, and they oh, got a, like a black crap around the outside, like a sealer around the primers. Okay. And I don't trust those. I'm just going to say save the projectile and dump the rest. Hmm. I'm going to go grab one. Hold on a minute. I'll show you. Yeah, they're, they're okay. They're, I've seen the black sealer before, though. But you don't know. You know, if you're seeing the other guy's stuff, you can't trust anything. So <clears throat> where did everyone go on the side? Hmm. <coughs> Hey, Jim. Mm. Isn't it true on a revolver that the barrel is actually a smaller diameter than the throat of the chamber? 
Then the so when, it goes, when it goes through, it goes into the forcing cone and then goes down the barrel. So your yeah. barrel diameter is smaller than that. And so, you know, you're, you're going to shoot oversized bullets anyway. So, I mean, your contact with your lands and grooves is filled out. I don't think anything's riding on top of the, the lands. Well, we're talking copper. Lead's riding. Same thing, same thing with copper. Okay, so those all got a hit. And does a pretty it, solid hit. Does it say S and B? What is the the field? It's got, it, it almost looks like a browning, but it's not browning. Almost. It's got some funky characters on it. It doesn't say the caliber on it? Well, not mil no, it don't say it. Oh, got numbers. Seven. I can't read it. Hmm. So I don't know what they are. I don't think. So I'm just going. I'm just going to say the projectile. Yeah. Out of them, dump the powder in the garden, and probably trash the rest. I think I have some silver bullets with black sealer, and those are like TZ. There's called something weird. Um, anyway. Uh, I don't the whole the reloads, um, but you know, unless he sealed his primers black, huh? Yeah, I wouldn't trust anything though. If no. you got primer hits with bullets that aren't even out of it, so exactly. So I'm just going to salvage the bullets out of those. Mm -hmm. All the stuff that I know that he reloaded the cast 357 mags in the. Uh, 45 ACPs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Some of them haven't been hit. The primers ain't been hit. But seeing some of the brass with holes in the primers and absolutely flat primers that you, can, you can't tell that there's a primer in the, the rim. They're so flat. Yeah, I'm like, it. no, I can't trust anything he loaded. He got a little frisky. Very. Yeah. Or he was getting old and maybe was double charging or because he was using a lead pro 1000 okay and that uses the disc mm -hmm. dropper yeah so i don't know if he was double charging overcharging some kind of way yeah but those on some of them those discs work pretty good uh, uh, i've never used one so i don't know I think he's just loading hot. Probably. Doing Alaska loads. Or use, using the wrong hole for the different load. The wrong bushing. Yep. Thinking that he had one bushing in it maybe. and Because I know he's using bullseye with one of the powders. Mm -hmm. So I, don't, I can't remember what the other one was. I think Unique. I remember right, unique don't take much to over pressure it. It depends on his volume and everything. So yeah. who knows? So either way, we're just gonna pull all the it's like a small dish full of stuff. We're just gonna pull all of it. Yeah, I, I have a lot that I need to pull that I don't trust from other people. But I got a five gallon bucket of 45 ACP band, brass, large primer. Nice. And probably a, I don't know, maybe a small coffee container with small primer brass in it. I got a bunch of 44 mag, a bunch of 45 Colt, a bunch of 38 special. A little bit of 357 mag, but I already got plenty of that anyway. But, so there was some really good brass yeah. in that lot. Yeah, and the Colt brass is not cheap. Mm -mm. The Colt, the Mac, the 44, the 38 Special. Mm -hmm. All those. I even got some 3220 brass in there. Mm. About eight or ten of them. 
Yeah, I was looking at 44 Special Brass. It's not cheap right now. No, I got I got a little bit of that I bought off of the um, one of the Discords. Hmm. It, it's funny because I've seen some sites selling it, and then I go to uh, Starline, and it was cheaper because it's free shipping. You know, mm -hmm. it's like what the hell? Especially once fired brass, it should be cheaper than Starline. There you go. Nice. Starline Forty Four Smith and Wesson Special. Nice. I got a little bit, Uncle Jim. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Oh, I'm wondering who that person was. Mm. Mikey runs. Let's see if he was in the private chat. How long have you been reloading up? Uh Oops. 10, 12 years. Okay. Maybe a little longer. I started, I think, in what? Somewhere around 2008, 2010, somewhere in there. Oh. I started on a Dylan 550. Well, starting off on that, wow. Well, I found it for 200 bucks on Craigslist. There you go. With 45 ACP dies, 9 millimeter dies. Uh, what's the red tumbler? A little expensive sucker. I can't think of it. Tumbler, red. tumbler. The tumbler, tumbler, tumbler. Oh, yeah, the steel ones. Yeah, the, the red 10 pound, whatever yeah, it, it is. Gaskets, uh, the yeah. I got all we got all that for like two hundred bucks. Mm. Yeah, you're talking about the kind with the bolts on the outside. No, it's just a vibrating bowl, like the Dylan oh, one. So you're talking about the wet tumbler that has the bolts on the outside. No, this this is a dry tumbler. Okay, but it's so smooth you can leave the lid off of it. It don't create dust, and it still has the vortex where it sucks it under, mm -hmm. even with the lid off. I know my buddy's Dylan. He has to put the lid on it to get it to do the rolling mm -hmm. on it. Oh, just to get it to do it? Yeah. He's got the original Dylan one. Hmm. Yeah, I never had the Dylan one or the red one you're talking about. RCBS I had, a Harbor Freight one I had. Mm -hmm. And you covered them because of the dust. <laughs> you know, they yep. did the this job. one don't create no dust. It rolls it real good. Mm. Matter of fact, I did a um, video. It was like a little short. Back then, it was just a video. Now it's a short of was it hypnotizing or something like that. And it just shows the corn cob rolling in the tumbler. Mm. I think it's still up on my channel. It was like 15, 20 second video or something like that. Mm hmm. I gotta make sure I'm still sub to you. I think we covered that last time, didn't we? I think so. Uh, let me click on you here. Oh, you got well. Where are you? You're way up somewhere. Or oh, way I, down somewhere. I got, I got you. Uh, go to channel. Yeah, I'm subbed. Okay. I haven't been doing a whole lot of reloading or gun shooting or anything like that lately. So, mm, gotta get out. My, my channel has become going to the zoo with the grandkids and stuff like that, doing stuff with the grandkids. Yeah, well, that's good though. Do they shoot yet? Are they big enough? Oh, yeah. My granddaughter, she's 14. Oh, she, she's been shooting with me since she was. Three, four years old. Okay. She, a matter of fact, there's, there's, they, YouTube took it off, but it's still up on Rumble because I, it automatically uploads to Rumble. Mm -hmm. But 
where she shot the 444 on there and then YouTube took it off because it's a kid shooting a gun and oh my gosh yeah that's what I said Mario she sh she shot and she turned look at said I like it but it took about three takes to get her get that 444 working would speak loud enough to hear it hmm Originally, she only shot it the one time. She's like, I don't want to shoot that again. And I said, well, I'm trying to take a video. And she ended up shooting like three or four more times. And she didn't bother her nothing. Starting to rain. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Who's on the side still? Okay. So you get anything extra with paying for StreamYard? Uh, yeah, well, I did it because of the deal. Uh, you get 10 people. You can do banners and stuff like that. You can sh Other people can share your thing. I'm not interested in that. But it's unlimited time. Unlimited time. Uh, the deal I got, you still have the StreamYard in the corner, but it's a lot yeah. cheaper. A lot cheaper than what other people are paying so yeah i just said what the heck i'll i'll do a year what the heck what the heck mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes you just gonna say what the what the hell That's oh yeah idea. i feel you yeah so what happened to jerry man uh jerry had to go He'll be back for Christmas. Are you guys going to be on for the Christmas? When is that? You doing it on Christmas Day? Christmas Eve. Eve is next Saturday. 23rd. You know, you know technically, that's a Hispanic's fucking Christmas, right? Is it? Christmas yeah, Eve? We get, we get fucked up and open presents at 12, bro. That's how we do it. Christmas yeah. Eve, Eve. Eve of Eve, bro. That's how we do it. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, 23rd. I'm free, probably. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start uh, all those uh, bottles of whiskey going to be pretty empty. I got a bunch of I got a bunch of new liquor when I got for my birthday, so I haven't had a chance to to uh, drink it all. So I got quite a bit of bottles, so I'm good. Save some what is your what is your drink of choice, Mario? I'm more of a bourbon guy, man. Bourbon? I, yeah, that's always been my thing. Mm -hmm. Um I do like tequila, but I'm very picky when it comes to tequila because I don't like the cheap shit. You know, don't <laughs> give me that cheap ass shit, no Julio, where the fuck that is. I want the good Where about gold? Man. Yeah, I want the good stuff, man. Don't give me some cheap shit. Get the Patron. Um, yeah. But, you know, even Patron, some of that shit is crappy, man. Um, yeah. They, they do have, um, yeah, actually, the good thing about living here, man, is that you can get all that shit from Mexico, all the good stuff. and With the worm? This, yeah, with the worm. But it's like they, they get stuff that's <laughs> like from small distilleries. Yeah. So that stuff is really good, man, you know? And, um yeah. So some of the local um, local markets sell it, you know, and it's uh, it's really good. So the thing with that is that you just have to get it when it gets there because usually it's gone within a couple of days. So it's just one of those things because they they do small batches. So so yeah, I, I do like tequila. I I do not like vodka. Every time I drink vodka, I get a fucking headache. I don't know what it is about that spirit, but yeah. Vodka doesn't sit well with me. Man, I loved vodka. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Vodka. Vodka. That's me. I, I do vodka and orange juice all yeah. night long. Oh, yeah. Or cranberry. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, I don't know. Do they got Tagalog fucking uh, spirits there? Fucking eagle? You ignorant fuck. <laughs> 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 No man, I like I like if it's good, I, I'll drink it, man. But uh, yeah, I'm very particular <clears throat> on 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 spirits, you know. Beer, yeah, I, I drink fucking anything on beer. 
I like the idea of a bourbon, but I've never cared for the flavor of a bourbon unless I'm just drinking the cheap shit and it's going to taste yeah. nasty anyway. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, everybody has their particulars, you know. Like Jack and Jim. Jack is Jack is good. Jack has a. I like the black label Jack. Mm -hmm. I like the 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 black label Jack is a really good thing. I said I like the the idea of having a glass of bourbon or something like that, but it yeah. just everybody's different, man. There's some people that like gin. Pretty big into that, you know, a little tangeray. I don't, I don't mind gin sometimes. It's good. I don't mind gin. Um, I, I like rum, but if I drink rum, it's more in a mixed drink, you know? Mm -hmm. I can't fuck with it just by itself. Rum yeah. is one of those, you know, you gotta, it's got to be mixed. Um, yeah. oh, it's a little sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little too sweet sometimes, but. Uh, yeah. It depends. What have you drank so far, uh, bourbon wise? Like Jack and Jim. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't really consider Crown a bourbon. Mm -hmm. It's a blend or whatever, right? Right. Um, have you tried <laughs> any other ones like uh, Jim Beam or Maker's Mart or anything like that? Well, no, I've done Jim Beam. I've done Jack Daniels, but. Mm. Past that, I didn't want to spend the money on something that I might not like. No, I get it. Well, Pat is probably. I'm not a bar goer, so. You know, Pat... I'm going to tell you something. The cheapest shit and the best shit you could get is shit that's selling Costco, bro. I don't know what it is about their fucking stuff, but I've had, you know, spirits that come from, from, from Costco and they're just as good or even better than, than what I've had. Like, I do like Jameson a lot. I, I do like that. I, I like Irish whiskey, um, you know, and they have their own version, and it was just as good as Jameson. I was like, wow. So. Costco just came out with uh, some new golf clubs that are full. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I saw that. The Callaways were nice, man. No, but, no, you know, their own brand. Yeah, they were like, huh? They came out with their own brand that's Forge. They're kind of like Giacomo's. Oh, yeah? And they, they the, the problem is they put their big Kirkland logo on it. Oh, yeah. And they can't. How much are they going for? Uh, three or four hundred a set of irons. Oh, yeah? But they're they're forged and they're they're kind of a uh, you know they're one third the price of the big boys that are doing the same thing, but they yeah. put a big ugly logo on there. I heard mm. the golf ball is good. Which one? They're golf balls. Oh yeah, yeah. I I've never played golf, but uh, I would like to get myself into it. But I'm left-handed, man. So you know, and my thing is uh, I don't want to. Most sets that I've seen, even the cheap ones that you can find in Big Five, they're fucking expensive. In my no, opinion. don't buy those. What you do is buy a used set. Uh -huh. it's, uh, the good golfers switch clubs every year or two, uh -huh. three years, whatever, and you can get some high-end stuff for cheaper than Big Five or whatever. No shit. I'll do okay. that. I could tell you what clubs to get. Yeah, because uh, left-handed, because um, I'm left-handed, man, so it's a... Uh, it's a little harder to find what you're looking for, but uh, oh, you, you, yeah, you can, and you're left-handed, so you, you're going to be able to find, uh, you know, not as many people are buying up the used clubs because it's not a, as many. Well, that's true, and that's a good point too. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I uh, actually, uh, we have a couple of golf courses in town. Um, there is one actually that's uh, very veteran-friendly, so. Um, yeah, I might check that out. Well, no, you, I've never golfed before, so I don't know. What you do is you go around to the garage sales around the nice golf courses, mm -hmm. and they really don't care about making profit off their old clubs, and boom, get them cheap, nice clubs, nice high end. Yeah, see, the thing is, I don't even know what type of what type of clubs I need to buy just to get started. Like, I probably need what, like an iron or some shit like that. A what? Uh, what I need? One of those 
the, the drivers? Or, or the you need a driver, yeah. If you could find a M1 or M2, that's going to be, they're still as good as the new ones. Uh, but yeah, you need, you need your right club length and everything, you know, so. Yeah. Most, yeah. most people are 5'10", so. Yeah. You, you know, being fitted is the best, but that's expensive. Yeah. I gotcha. But that's the way to do it. Garage sales around golf courses. Usually they'll have uh, neighborhood sales and you'll find all kinds of uh, good clubs. Yeah, it's a good idea, Uncle Jim. I'll check that out. Mm -hmm. So I was going to ask Kenny a question. I forgot what it was. Oh, well. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, it is Kenny with fucking ice cream eating ass. Where the fuck is he at? <laughs> I'm gonna fucking break all the damn ice cream machines out of the fucking McDonald's and shit. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, man. What are you talking about? Cheap. I don't know. To me, and see, here's my thing. The first time I ever got drunk off my ass, I got drunk off my ass of a fucking old English. So to me, anything cheap shit like that, I'm never drinking. That's why I kind of fucking, I'm very particular about what I drink. But uh, yeah, but beer, yeah, I like, I like all kinds of beer, man. I like IPA, I like Pilsners, I like, I like it all. I like real pils Pilsners from Germany. Yeah, well, me too. Oh God, don't even lie. But you know, honestly, you guys are probably gonna hate me for saying this, but I really not never got into the whole fucking Guinness thing, man. It's just huh? I don't know what it is. I just not into it. Have you had it on the tap? I have not. You got to have it on the tap. It's yeah, different. They have the the cans where you pop the thing and get the gas in it, but it you got to have it on the tap. Hmm. I'll probably give it a shot, you know, because I, me and my wife, been talking about uh, making a trip to uh, to the UK. We want to, you know, do the whole UK thing, you know, check out, you know, not only England but you know Wales and Scotland and, and um, Ireland and all that, you know. Let's check it all out. You know, moonshine is a shit, man. I had a, a, a little bit of that uh, not too long ago, and it was gone. And the thing about it is I didn't even drink that much of it. it was, uh, my my uh, my kids and my and my nephews drank it all. I mean, they're all adults now. But it's like, what the hell, man? I got that for me. Shine is good. Shine is very, very good, especially. Old school. Old school. Yeah, I love shine. I love shine, especially when I was uh, stationed in Kentucky. Mm, yeah. A lot of good places they have that stuff. Oh. We're doing all this booze talk. Christmas is coming. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's really the time when a lot of us, I know I get drunk on my ass. That and New Year's, that's the other day I get I get pretty tore up from the floor up. But then that, I'm, I'm good. Have you got your eggnog ready? Yeah, yeah, I have not got my eggnog. I'm a, I'm a horrible person. I have not got it yet. But I need to get it so I can do a little punchy on it. I don't know. Uncle Jim loves that eggnog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I quit drinking, so. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up, guys. Oh, now I want to I want to bring this up. I'm real proud Go of ahead. Jim. Jim realized that you know, hey, you know, he was on the sauce and he needed to get off of it, and he got off of it. And that's you know, I mean, other than the thing that I was talking about with the you know with the foreign navies and stuff, I always try to avoid talking about alcohol with Jim because you know. No. Jim realized he had a problem, and I'm, I'm gonna, hey, he manned up and said, "No, I, I got to get off this shit." You know what I mean? And I respect that. 
Yeah, that's a hard no fucking respect. thing to do, man. That it, is, that is it is. Hard. Well, it's it's even harder when you're retired. When you're retired, that's a slippery slope. You start living every day like that. And you start in the morning and you don't give up until you're passed out at night, you know? And uh yeah, that's that's not good. So I'm really proud of Jim. Really am. It it He's doesn't work bother. It doesn't bother me talking about it though. It doesn't bother me. So don't worry about that. There's no nothing worse than an ex smoker or ex ex drinker, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't it didn't bother me at all. I don't even think about it. So <laughs> Oh, I haven't had Must made everybody mad. Wow, Pat. Pat hasn't had a drink since last chat. Are you kidding me? Damn. I find that hard to believe. I was going to say, he was milking off that last bottle. Yeah, the last chat you had with a wife? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So yeah, Tread had me all confused there for a little bit. Yeah. Outer, inner, all that stuff. Digging bullets out of the backyard, it's the diameter and you got grooves in it. And then let you go up because it can squish anyway. Right. And what I was saying earlier about, you know, uh pistol barrels, you know, on revolvers, the they're they're smaller than the diameter of the bullet, so you know, it, it squeezes down even the even the copper jacketed bullets. The yeah, I, I was saying halfway. I don't know why I said halfway because it's fully expand. It's fully on the walls, but yeah, you don't, it's not overdone like lead can be. Right. That's what I. Yeah. Right. But on revolvers, sometimes they're not. Mm. Um, sometimes the throats are the same. Uh, it just depends on the revolver. So I like them to squeeze through the throats at least. Yeah. And uh, then you know you're good. Unless they did something ass backwards. But... Uh, Yeah. So uh, let's see what someone sends a bottle of tequila. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I I give it to my son or something. He doesn't. He hardly drinks, but he likes good stuff. So it it doesn't matter. There's booze in the house. It's not like a problem like that. You guys are. It, it's a personal, it was my choice. All right. There's booze in the house. There's good booze in the house, but I, I don't, I'm not drinking. <clears throat> so it's not like I have a chastity belt on or anything. I could go have a really good drink right now, but I don't. All right. All right. <laughs> chastity belt. Ooh, now that would kill me. <laughs> That would put me under the dirt nap. Yeah. Come to Vegas, Jim. Oh, the temptation. Oh, he's trying to tempt me. You know what, Pat? I'd just sit there and watch you. Yeah. I'd have something with flavor. That's all I need. I can't just drink straight water. I need flavor. So. I like these squirt things. These squirt things are awesome if you get the right kind. Uh, hey, Jim. Uh, something I was thinking about for your channel is since you have the uh, area available to you, and you know, not don't 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 go out and buy things that would make a mess. But you know, the next time you uh, go, you know, you're out, you know, out and about or whatever, somebody's having a garage sale. You know, take a look at some of the stuff in there that, you know, you go in there and you spend like 10 bucks or something. You can buy a bunch of stupid crap to freaking shoot at. You know what I mean? 
Oh, yeah, just yeah. get yourself some targets, you know, like you know, uh, you know, just just stupid crap that they're they got there in the garage sale, you know, and you just take it out and blow it away, and you know, I mean, what the hell, you know? Uh, yeah, there are out there they do that. They look for uh, they look for uh, garage sales, and they go up there and they spend like twenty bucks and. They get themselves a bunch of props, throw them in the back of their truck, and they go out there and shoot them up. You know, uh, but you know, I mean, you don't want to buy anything that's going to make a mess. You know, you don't want to buy like cookie jars, you know, stupid looking cookie jars and shit like that because it, it just blows them apart, and then you know you got ceramic all over the place. You know, you don't want to make a mess. But things like little dolls and you know crap like that, just stupid shit, and take it out there with your uh, twelve gauge and blow them away and stuff. That'd be funny. Yeah, that'd be funny. I know. I, d I don't want a mess. That's for sure. Um, I do have a armor's wrench I want to shoot. So there we yeah. go. Uh, cheap AR. Yeah, next armor. time you're down here at the, at the thrift store or whatever, yeah, you, know, you spend like 10, 15 bucks or something like that on a bunch of props, man. You know, crazy little dolls and shit like that you can well, shoot at and stuff. That's where I got the princess, the preacher shot when he was over here. And uh, yeah. well, Big Bird was in the car. Yeah. We still have that stuff makes here. great turns. Yeah. The, the thrift store sure. has a bunch of toys and stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, you can, you know, and not just that, you know, you go to a garage sale and say, like, they got a, one of those little garbage cans, you know, you put in your bathroom or something like that. And they only want like 50 cents for it. Buy it, fill it up with water or whatever, and take it out there and shoot it with you know a high powered gun. You know, it's funny. It's it's good stuff. That makes good times. Yeah, I just don't like the debris in the yard. I like to keep it clean out there. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Now, you could make stuff out of food products, and then it'll just deteriorate out there. Critters can, yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah, like you get, a, it, you get an expired freaking can of hominy or, or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Or uh -huh. talk to the guy at the uh -huh. store. If he's going to throw away a bunch of vegetables, take them out there and shoot them up. Yeah. I have, I have, really cases, it up. I have cases of food that's way expired cases and the storage but to get to it it's a very end under a bunch of stuff so i don't want to i think they're canned beans and stuff too and they explode when you hit them with 308 oh yeah you bet they do they explode but then you get the metal shrapnel yeah i don't know we were going to give it to uh, someone that has pigs you know because canned food will go way beyond expired and people that have uh, animals like pigs or something that eat stuff like that, we were going to give it to them. So yeah, uh, but yeah, it's got to be twenty years old <laughs> at least. I don't know, something like that. I don't know if you remember or not, but remember when Ozark Ozark had that? Uh, he had some honey went on with a bunch of guys and they shot all those uh they, they shot all those uh hogs all those uh wild boars and they just mm -hmm. piled them up and then they shot shot that pile with a huge thing of you know, tannerite and blew them up that was pretty yeah. wild <laughs> yeah i dusted the cars and everything yeah <laughs> the the raining of guts i would have an umbrella yeah <laughs> We are we are gonna we might use some tannerite in the next video. Cause I, I need to do a Christmas video, so I'm doing a Christmas video maybe uh this week. Before the chat. Hey, we're supposed to blow up a snowman. The pro well the problem it's not gonna be uh the snowman, uh the problem with tannerite, it doesn't like cold, extreme cold. It won't go off. So we shut the snowman and it went poof. And it, and the tannerite was too cold. So uh, you need like you need to use something to keep it warm by the time you're all set up to shoot it. 
like a hand warmer or something, but I don't want a hand warmer all over the yard either, you know, blown up. But you can take a hand warmer or something like that and keep it warm before, you know, while it's inside. Right, right before you put it in there and shoot it. Yeah, because if you let it sit inside the snowman, we found it won't go boom. Then we looked it up, and Tannerite does not like cold. And that's why they weren't going off. And I'm like, son of a bitch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we were waiting to blow the windows out. Nothing happened, you know. Mm. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here, man. But uh, it's good seeing you guys. Take care. Yeah, guys, we guys. should cut this off anyway. Side chat. Love you guys. No homo. Thanks for coming on, Mario. And yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate it, guys. About Thank Christmas so Eve. All, All right. right, man. You guys too. Take care. All right, All right, see you later, care. Mario. And Tred, I'm glad you came on. I'm glad to be. I'm going to bounce out too. There. I'll okay, see you later, Jim. Care, All right. Take care, yep. Taurus. Bye. All right. Uh, where's your big tree? Well, I did not decorate this year. Okay, because you remember, yeah, we hardly did this year either. Uh, you, I, I remember you were in the chat and you had that huge tree. Yeah. It's actually on this channel, Uncle Jim, too, uh, when I did this conglomeration of Christmas or something. I don't know. Anyway, you're in that with the big tree. You're sitting, and you got to, you, this is before they uh, banned us for having guns, you know. Mm -hmm. They are, I think. A R, yeah, maybe a pistol car carbine or something. Maybe it's your uh, SIG, three fifty seven SIG or something. I don't Problem. Know. Yeah. Which I still need to mess with it. I, I got a three hundred eight carbine flat spring, and I haven't tried it in it yet. Mm. And I've had the spring for the last year and a half. Wow. I said I just haven't been doing anything. I. I Family gets in the way right now, so. Yeah, well, it's okay. That, that that's a good getting away. It's not getting in the way. It's just, yeah, taking care of family. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Well, if you can make it uh, for the Christmas chat, you're welcome to come on. Like I said I, I'll I'll be free on the twenty third. So. I know twenty fourth. Evening, I think there's plans in the 25th and I think the 26th. Yeah, 20. Uh, yeah, 23rd is the EV. Yeah, Saturday. You okay. have family come in? No. For Christmas? No, no family around here anymore. So it's just going to be us, which is easier. Don't have to clean yeah. too much. Those toilets don't have to be effing clean, Pat. <laughs> yeah, we clean the toilets anyway. You ever want to do another invite people over? I don't know. I don't know. You seemed like you enjoyed it. I know you stressed about it. But I think I, you enjoyed it. I was stressed. I know what to expect now. And don't worry about it. House doesn't have to be clean. Everyone doesn't give a crap. Mm -hmm. they have fun. So uh, making everyone happy, you know, are they going to, uh, all that stuff. Uh, you know, once you did it, then okay. Yeah. It's not as hard the next time. I just get to be a worry wart sometimes. Yeah. Uh, glitter. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. I, I, I miss your your sledding videos. I know. I'm, I'm afraid to blow a shoulder, a hip, or a knee. My hip's already messed up right now. And I, I I know that I'm pushing it. I'm going to break something. Going down Devil's Corner. Yeah, I'm going to break <laughs> something. I've, I've done it like five years now and got away with it. Yeah. So I don't know. I might do it, but... I wish I had some padding and stuff like that, but I don't. I don't know. A big it's like, 
it's like being on a ladder. It's the smallest ladder that kills you, not the tall ladder. That's right. (laughs) That's so true. And so maybe I do a, a crappy run and get just totally busted up, you know, and not flip. You know, <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. know. 25 bucks a pound at grass for what? Tannerite or powder? Oh, it's probably black powder. Mm. Sometimes you got to know your limitations. Now that's Clint Eastwood. As a matter of fact, we got to frame that magazine. Do I have it nearby? Yeah, let me see if I got that. Doesn't bounce. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, oh, where is that magazine? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Here we go. Uncle Jim's five minutes away from everything. Sometimes a man's got to know his limitations. Now, I told my son, if Clint Eastwood's ever in the area visiting, you put this in front of his face and he will sign it. He's going to laugh his ass off and he will sign it. All right. Uh Uh-oh, what happened? Oh, there you go. So there you go, Jag. That's his quote. A man's got to know his limitations. You got to have the, you got to have the wrinkle right here. Yeah, yeah. So doesn't bounce like he used to. <laughs> I'm afraid of breaking something. Every time something heals up, something else goes bad, and I don't want to cause, you know, put uh, gas on the fire. <clears throat> anyway, I, I need to eat dinner. Um, yeah, I just had a snack cake. A snack cake, yeah. I had some crackers while we were talking. It was killing me. But yeah, I got to eat. So, uh, everyone well, I would has- say save your time for next week, but you got plenty of time. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't use that excuse anymore. That's right. Uh, but everyone, well, we can the- close it out anytime you're ready. Okay. Uh, everyone on the side chat, love you all. And next week is the get dude up for Christmas. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but, uh, hope, hope to see you, uh, next week and everyone get their shopping done. Thanks for coming on tread. Any last words? No, <laughs> good night, everybody. Merry Christmas. All right, until next time, Merry Christmas, everybody. And 